Okay, he who... I'm guessing that was the gaze into the abyss quote that we just sort of blipped through. Yes, I was a pretentious little scrote. <laughs> Welcome once again to the Ego Review, in which I flutter my old tat around for Gabriel to look at. <laughs> His withered, wilted lettuce leaves. And we see how far I've grown since my teenage years. I gosh, think remarkably. Gosh, it's already hot in here. Um, okay, so we're doing WASD, or, or is it uh, just, just the D-pad for the, um, the, the arrow keys for the options? Should be WASD once you're in-game. Alright, god, I hope so. And of course, there's no control change options in the options menu in old Duke Nukem 3D, which is what this is a mod of. So, Detail. I can't actually remember... Hi. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't place how old I was when I first started working on this, Internet but it, I was working now. on it for quite a long period of time. So much so, I seem to recall that, um, because the point of this, uh, exercise was to mod Dune Nukem 3D into a game about, um, a snarky British character, and obviously I changed all the voice lines to be me. Um, so yeah, take us, take us through, you know, give us a, a run through. Of, is there a cutscene opening to explain the plot? Are we going, you know, would there be... No, you might as well just start, really. Oh, okay. But, uh... Get ready to hear my juvenile voice before I had a decent microphone. <sighs> Massively compressed. Yes, let's not draw it out. You'll want the first episode. There's mm, only okay. two episodes. I never got around to finishing the rest. So there you go, Internet. Your job now is to make War by Moonlight and cleaning up in the Unreal 4 engine. Please don't. Please. I, I really suck. I can take it. This is not the best background and font. No, I'm finding that. But I you... But hey, you read it. I can't hear it. Oh, well, there we go. Okay. Good. I'm glad you can't hear it. Cause okay. I, cause Ooh, look at that. That's a dead Duke Nukem, I think. No, it's a dead security guard. Oh, okay. It looks like I Duke designed. Nukem's pants. So what, how this works is, you are... Um, There's a jump. A Br British guy. Is there open? Your okay. name's Chris Quinn. I'm going to call him the Mighty Quinn. You've got a gun. E. Yep. Yeah, and... Uh, you fight monsters in an, in... Oh, man. And you're in an insane asylum. Because you're just so mad, you guys. Hold it down, dude. Hold oh, it down. Okay. Whoa, you're shit at this. I, fe I have the feeling we're going to be here a while, I'm listeners. I'm pushing space. Press E. See, because space used to be used. Okay. The line is, something's awfully fishy around here, and for once it's not the casserole. I'm a professional humorist, I'll remind you. Ah, ah, ah. See, when I first started working on this, I recorded a bunch of lines for it. And then when I, um... And then I sort of stopped working for a while and then came back to it. And when I came back to it, I found that my voice was much deeper than <laughs> it had been in the, the original t line takes. That's how young I was when I first started oh, this. Oh, poor Ben, he's dead. Uh, use... Use the, uh, chart, actually. Aha! A secret place. So yes, I always begin to do Nukem 3D editing. I could probably remember a lot of the keyboard shortcuts if you pressed me for Duke Nukem build. Yeah, I've got to get my, like, quick old 90s... Alright, that's not shooting. You're missing! Yeah. Oh, hey, you found a shotgun. Oh, I had one bullet. It had thing. one shell left. So because I, want, I did the, um like, low-effort Duke Nukem mod thing, where I wanted to feel like I'd changed something, so I kind of reduced your starting health. Just for larks. There's, there's ammo past him. If you can just get past him, you'll have all that lovely ammo. BOOT! Yep, there's Boot. And there's a corpse. And I also redid the monsters. But I couldn't be asked to redo many of the monsters, so initially, you'll basically only be fighting the zombies. <laughs> Hey, shake what, it, baby. What are the names on those charts, by the way? Huh. Hey! I was nothing if not self-referential even back then. Joss Whedon's got nothing on you. Okay, now this is a the Yahtzee-verse. Oh wait, he's... I think he's saying something. But it was a kind of stupid line anyway. Was it about, like, looking at titty women on the TV? Nah, huh. it, it was just... That, that line was just like a plot-building line. Oh. He said, uh... This is officially weirding me out. What are all these grey things? Plot. Yeah. I mean, uh, can't be a, a snarky joke every single line. What do you think this is? Buffy the Vampire Slayer? 
Look in the mirror, look in the mirror. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking. You look different in that in which I mean it was the original Duke Nukem sprite rather ineptly drawn over. Eep, pulling a face. I also like drew f like um, solid black sleeves over over your arms when you're using certain weapons. Mm. And previously Duke was of course bare armed. Use your shotgun, you got three shells. Yeah, I thought I might save them for like, you know. Well, he, they, they like, you'd have made a net gain there anyway. Boom! Ooh, scary bloody words. Those bloody words are surprisingly high up on the wall for something being drawn by someone presumably in uh, death throes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Dwayne, look, just hold me up. Look, shut up. I know, I'm bleeding too, Dwayne, just shut up. Ooh, Dosbox was, uh, Ugh. Dosbox getting a bit flickery there. Oh, dude, it was flickering as... Next time you die, just enter like the god mode code and you'll just come spring straight back to life. I happen to know this. <laughs> so I was ne when I was in Duke Nukem like, level modding, I was never content with just making, you know, like a deathmatch level or a one-off level that you had to run through like the setup menu. I wanted to make a whole mod and replace stuff in the game and art assets and shit like that. I wanted to do some good honest work. Because I had ambition. That's why I was making adventure games in high school. I was, uh, perhaps, you know, to quote Red Dwarf, a man whose ambition far outstripped his, uh, ability. Uh, you'll show them. You'll show them all. Yes, so we're just, uh, venturing through the mental asylum, trying to find the, the way out. Uh, is that what I'm doing? I guess. They're coming to take me away, ha ha, ha ha, he he, to the funny farm where well, life is beautiful all well, the time. Well, they took you away. They seem to be trying, if anything, they seem to be trying to take you out again. <laughs> oh, Evil. Yes. I wonder what's in there. Yes, in the important electric chair room that uh, every mental asylum must have. Okay. See, if there's a decal on a I door, because I happen to know this because I did do Nukem edit. Mm -hmm. If there's a decal on a door, you know that door's not moving. Oh, okay. Because the decals do not move with the door. Ah. Oh, see, that's, that's, I'm learning things. Um, I'm guessing that's going to kill me if I go in there. Well, there's a key there. Yeah. So I think you do have to go in there. Oh, I know I have to go in there. But the game's just going to flat out take some of your health away, because it's an asshole. Really? Yes. But don't worry, there's lots of health items around. This is design. This is action game design. <laughs> so you just got all your health back just then. That's interesting, because I, I would have just thought, okay, there's obviously a switch. I, I thought that was lethal to the touch. Yeah, I was just sort of working within some quite severe limitations to this. I never really put much thought into the design. It was not, what can we do? It was just like, uh, what's the most we can do to differentiate from Duke, uh -huh. I suppose. Boom. So they, these these zombies are just the pig cop, basically. They're the pig cop, but I lowered their health significantly. And uh, added uh, my new voice files, which are obviously me again. Clearly where Slender Man got ripped off from. S slowed down. Hey, everyone knows Slender Man was ripped off from a different thing I made up. <laughs> which one? You know, the um, Chizir Mythos. Alright. Oh, uh, you yeah, know, it's been a long time for me. In Trilby's notes. Oh, give me that. Give me that there, pistol ammo. I suppose I got 29. That's pretty good. That's a lot of shotgun. Yeah. So that's enough shotgun to get through the business. That's shotgun up the wazoo. <coughs> Patience. Now, it was a tradition in Duke and, like, huh. s like Oh, okay. <laughs> Art. It that was, is, like, a very sort of 90s character expression there. I was very into drawing characters with trench coats because I used to own one. I guess this is just another case of me putting a character that's basically me <laughs> in a game. <laughs> At least you... Okay, it's E, isn't it? Oh, all right, okay. At least you lived in England yes. where wearing a trench coat would make sense. Well, I even wore it in the summer months. Yeah, but what's British summer, really? A uh, controlled duck. Oh, okay. British summer can actually be quite warm. At the height of summer, it can be as warm as India. Huh. Okay. I mean, it's not not a patch on Australian summers, of course. Which, of course, I've which I've noticed hasn't doesn't stop certain people wearing leather trench coats. No. even throughout. Oh, okay, there we are. No, that was there was a guy. 
What's oh. And of course it was a notorious like trick with the dude you can build. You couldn't do sector over sectors, because like this is fake 3D. You could, however, add an invisible teleport when you're dropping down a hole. Is that how they did that? Yes. Huh. So when you drop down a hole... You're actually like, getting... Yeah, you're being, if you did a teleporter thing, but you like place the teleporter sector effector off the ground, then it wouldn't make the teleport zappy effect. You'd just invisibly drop from one sector to another. You know how they did uh, water and how you could pass underwater? Yeah. Uh, the underwater was actually a completely different room. When you pressed down while on the water surface, you just you were teleported, teleported into the... to a different room. <laughs> sector over sector, you just couldn't do. Because this isn't 3D, this is just like arranging 2D textures in such a way that it looks 3D. That's... I... God, all this time I never knew. Learned if you've so ever played much. Shadow Warrior, which was another yes. 2.5D game, they, it, at first glance, it looks like they managed to do sector over sector, but they just um, had a trick where they'd create the illusion of the sector before you passed into it. So a lot of work went into Ah, huh. that's another redesigned sprite. That's just the, the face hugger thing from Duke 3D, but it looks like a bunch of guts. Damn you, guts. All right, I'm not wasting shotgun on yeah, guts. Yeah, don't waste shotgun on guts. Just, just use your pistol on them. You can take one quote away from this, ladies and gentlemen. Don't waste shock on guts. And there's a limit to how much of the programming I could change. So I could only change like the, the con files, not into like the deep source code of the game. And I couldn't find a way to change the colour of the jibs that the um, face huggers made when they explode. <laughs> You're supposed to press that switch, by the way. Oh. Well, shoot it if you can't use it. There you go. That shoot will you, do then. something, I'm sure. What the? Oh, okay. Yes, he stood up by surprise. Out of the way, guts! Do you wanna know I'm how, fat fighting. Do you wanna know um, how I replace the sound effect of the face oh, hugger? Uh, okay. Ow. Oh, you're dying horribly in fire. Am I able to get out of here? No, there's no escape. You're dead. Okay, that's fantastic. Super duper. Well, I would say into the god mode, but there's no way back up. Oh, Just have to start again. Okay. You may want to like point out. Okay. Things like that, because I just couldn't even, I couldn't even see, like... Yeah. I mean, uh, this game doesn't really have the sterling game design you've come to expect from me. Yeah, just enter God mode. How do I do that? It's D-N-K-R-O-Z. I want to die. There. Hmm. Now you're immortal Chris Quinn. Chris Quinn was a character I did some other things with back in the day. Like, I made a, a brief, I briefly made a sprite comic on my website called Chris and Trilby, <laughs> in which Chris from this and Trilby from the Jizo Mythos were forced to interact, even though they hated each other. <laughs> was, uh, forced to be together. So what, what, what were their adventures like? What happened to Chris? Well, and well, Chris was a sort of wild and crazy irresponsible demon hunter, and Trilby was a refined gentleman thief. Okay, Basically, okay. Chris just sort of latched onto Trilby and wouldn't leave him alone, because he thought it was funny. <laughs> Alright, we're back to the guts. Go away, guts. You can't even hurt me. I am your god! See... I made the, the, uh... The gut monsters. And when I made them, I said it was in reference to the movie Brain Dead. Yeah. Because uh, there's a scene in that film where somebody's guts comes out of their body and strangles someone. Oh, that movie. Peter Jackson's brain dead. That was before he was making nice, friendly Hobbit films. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try that and meet the Feebles. That's another classic. Oh God, yes. Meet the Fe meet I encourage you to watch Meet the Feebles. Actually, I encourage you to trick a parent of small children into what let their chi children watch Meet the Feebles. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah, I think this might actually be a jumping puzzle because oh, okay. those are so great. Yeah, especially in like. Fake 3D. Yeah. You have to be careful to jump off from there onto the thing directly above you. Uh, because you can't do sector on sector. You can, however, make a sprite and flatten it and lay it out like it's a floor. Of course, the graphics makes it flicker like Billio. Okay. So just, oh, lordy. I think this must have been my tribute to Half-Life and all the jumping on things and vents you do in that. How are you doing in there? Uh, 
Also, you can't hear this because we've got the volume down low, but uh, the MIDI music for each level is like uh, the MIDI for a pop song that whose title is in some way related to what's going on in the level. A theme you'd revisit when you started Zero Punctuation. Yes, initially. I think... Oh, fuck. I'm... God fucking damn it. Well, you picked up... Well, you pressed the switch that does something, I think. Oh, uh, okay. Not that way, because you need a key. I think... Yes, it opened that door. Uh. So now you can get in there. Eat it, you little splotch. You guys can die just because I don't like the look of you. There's a switch. Shoot the switch. This is uh... Okay, I just broke the glass. Whoops. Oh. That's just reminded me that there's a there's a secret around here. Hmm. If you go back to that office, not that office, the yeah that one, and uh, you pass through that red curtain and follow the small tunnel, you'll find a room with Rorschach from Watchmen nailed to a wall. Because it was a tradition in Junior 3D to add pop culture references and stuff. And these were the pop culture references that appealed to me. <laughs> um, to my recollection, I mean, I think the first time I saw sort of the kind of pop culture Easter eggs was in Duke 3D. Like, were there games that did that much before Duke, or...? Um, not to the same extent. I mean, in no. Duke 3D, you could, you could find Indiana Jones, like, yeah. impaled on a wall. You could find Luke Skywalker hanging from the ceiling. And that was continued. That tradition was continued in a lot of like first-person shooters after that, like in Blood, where you could actually find a corpse of Duke Nukem. Huh. That's not a real fridge; it's a fake fridge. Why would you tease me like that? Cause you're so teasable. Okay, okay. Teleport down. I th yeah, I think the pop music for this level was Disco Inferno because everything's on fire. Yay! It was the first episode of Duke 3D only had six levels because they released the first episode as shareware. Oh, yeah. They like second and third episodes had like eleven levels each. I think it was like nine normal levels and two secret levels. I played through it again a few years ago and was surprised at how quick it was. When yeah, you say just, quick, well, just it this, it was a short game. Like, Do you think? Yeah. Okay. Like, the stages were quite short. Okay, wait, wait, I got something for you guys. Yes, yeah. you got a rocket launcher that doesn't look any <laughs> different. Hey! Hey, that was something I added to, like, the programming. Like, every now and again, blowing up of a zombie spawns one of the gut monsters. Ah, clever, a little bit like the, uh, Spanish people from Resident Evil 4. If you, you like. shoot their heads off. If you like. Oh no, a, ho a zombie horde. Oh yes, God, I, I wish I could hear this. I replaced some of the lines that he says when he explodes people. I think the last one we just heard was, This is just like Guy Fawkes Night. Because <laughs> he's British, you see. Mm. What is Guy Fawkes Night like in the UK? Oh, okay, I'm out of Well, it's basically our Thanksgiving. We, oh. have, we have fireworks under fire. <laughs> we can burn some shit, you know. We have, tradi we have certain traditions with it. I mean, the, the usual tradition was to, like, burn an effigy of Guy Fawkes. Ah, okay. And we'd uh, call that the guy. And we'd eat baked potatoes and bananas in tin foil. And that sort of thing. Bananas See, that's what? actually quite a difficult effect to create, what you can see on that wall. Is the, that a lighting effect? The uh, lightness. Well, the thing is... Um, uh, you, uh, a wall uh. can only have one texture. Mm. So what you're seeing there is a very, 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 very narrow additional wall that's been put up in front of the the back wall. <laughs> Probably that is na if you look, take a really close look, you might be able to tell. I'm surprised you figured this out that fast. Oh, I think you shot it twice. Oh, figs. You just want to use the pistol for this. I don't have the pistol. Yes, ammo. you do. Oh, I don't know that. Um, hang on, what's the button? Oh, never mind. I keep... Ooh, there's that fellow again. Yeah, remember him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a fun week on the internet for me. I'm sure it was. But, you know, at least I'm only, like, referencing myself, not making myself, like, a main character. Yeah. Except by, by proxy. By proxy, <laughs> Yeah, those are the things that guts might burst out of. 
Do we remember the grand Dunukem tradition of uh, button codes? Where you had to press the right combination of buttons? Okay. You've you tried that one. Oh, there's a thing on me. Yes, you might want to shoot that off. Or you die. Oh no, you got god mode on, never mind. Yeah. How do I blow up the... No. Just shoot with a pistol or something. Humping my face. Yes. You keep trying the same ones over and over again. Ah, <sighs> finally. This man will be teaching our children, listeners. Well, I couldn't tell if it was like somewhere you have to reset the... the thing. No, of course not. It's just, all it, all it records is what's in and what's out. Okay. It's just a certain combination of ins and outs. Why do you keep throwing pipe bombs around? I have to make sure those, if those, I thought those guts might sort of wake up and start being, well, shoot being them, all then. dicks about it. Oh, I like pipe bombing. They like die, they die in like a single pistol shot. Yeah, but I've got pipe bombs and it's fun to throw them at things. Why don't you save them for a big monster that will die in a more pleasing way? I'll hold you to that. I hope they die in more pleasing ways. Have you modded the bosses? That's what I'm... Yes. Good. We Cause... shall see. Bah. Yes. Using the texture that Dune Nukem 3D used for skyscrapers to make very, like, low... Like, rural British no, 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 no. towns. And now we're in a pub. A pub? A pub. Where I'm getting a great amount of use of the original Jude Nukem asset. Yeah. Alright. Come on, mouse look. Just don't be funny on me now. I tell you, it was quite an arse getting this game running. Why? Oh, you mean like on, on the modern... Yeah, because hey. originally I'd created like a sort of batch file that replaced the key Jude Nukem files with the Age of Evil ones. But it turns out the modern Windows doesn't use the same commands as batch windows or batch files from older versions of Windows. Mm. So I had to sort of manually find and replace files until the bloody thing could be persuaded to work. <laughs> Should have asked the internet, they'd probably be like, I've got it working right here! I didn't want to know. I didn't want to know that people were still playing it. <laughs> you shame Yahtzee. Whoa. You shame him with your love. Hey, another corpse. And a bloody bedspread. Mm. See if you can guess which textures we find were originally from Dunning 3D and which ones I made. I will not be able to guess that. Well, this is all original uh, Duke, uh, mostly. Well, all of it. You can tell because all the ones I've made are really shittily shaded. Splat. This, young viewers, is based on an ancient thing called a video store. Okay, something happened when I... There we go. Well, it could be a bookshop. Ah, yes. More of the grand Duke Nukem 3D traditions. Once upon a time you had to leave the house to see porn and masturbate. Did you ever masturbate to Duke Nukem 3D? No. Not even to when the lady, like, showed you her titties when you gave her money? Nope. Sunset Road. What was the song for Sunset Road? I forget. Dicks. Um, might have been How's the Rising Sun. That guy has serious Sonic the Hedgehog face. Yeah, well, it's more DreamWorks face, I'd say. Yeah, well, that's, that's definitely what it is now. That's... Yeah, this level is Chris Quinn's house. He has a big house. Very Boom! The line there was, this is all very gratuitous. <laughs> oh, hey, a new monster. This was uh, basically the mini-boss from episode one of U3D that just had a... A minigun. Suck it, fat nuts! Those monsters in the game files are called the Lardars. <laughs> They're not real. They're just like big wooden blocks. I thought they might have been with a symbols on one. the front. All right, come on, Lardasses. Eat it, yeah. I think the music for this one was Country House by Blur. <laughs> I haven't listened to Blur in ages. One of the. Uh, Two bands battling for the Britpop crown back in the 90s. Them and Oasis, wasn't it? Yes. Didn't Oasis pretty much win? I don't know, I'd say Blur won. Because mm. they were actually made decent music and weren't just a pair of twats from <laughs> Manchester. <laughs> Manx aren't people. Manx, bloody Manx, bloody Manx twats. Okay. 
I got used armor. I didn't get a great amount of use out of the Junukum 3D skybox textures that weren't cities. Which weren't that many. Weren't okay. cities or space stations. Okay, wait, do I have to get air? Well, no, because you've... Because you got God Mode on. Oh, ah, okay. But if I didn't have God Mode on, I need to get air from those little vents. No. Okay. That's, that's just decoration. You just have to get through the water before you drown. Wait. Fair enough. Um, go back, go back, go back, go back. Uh, go through into that small tunnel. Now travel downwards. Enter that red hole. Mm. Keep going down. Aye, aye, aye. It's quite a long way. When you We're reach, going speed lunking. Hey, what's When you the? reach the bottom, go in another hole, and then surface in there. <gasps> Who's laughing now? <laughs> another reference. <sighs> yes, I actually, I remembered to add in the game code that you could shoot that and make guts come out. Shop smart. Shop oh, smart. Rest in peace. Is. Well, that's good. You're carrying on the tradition of hard to find and yes. pop culture references. Yes. Oh, I'm going up again, aren't I? Where am I? These textures make navigation fun. I didn't really know much about level design. I was basically just keep adding stuff until I feel like there's enough. It was basically my attitude for creating the levels in this game. <laughs> I think it's noticeable. I think more than anything else, I don't. Like, the endings of stages just sort of occur. The one, th one thing I did sort of consciously do is that I'd sort of go back and forth between making like the maze style levels where you have to find keys to access like more areas and uh, basically just linear sequences of set pieces in rooms, the styles of levels, which the doctor's residence would be an example of. Yeah. This is a bit more mazy. Uh, there's like um, human body parts on plates because... They, those assets happen to be in Junukum. There's no real reason mm, nummy, nummy, nummy. for them to be here in this. Oh yeah, in the plot of this game, our character is a writer. Because that's what horror happens to writers. <laughs> in Stephen King. It really books, does, anyway. yeah. <laughs> this is, I think you shouldn't feel so bad, because Stephen King still does this, really. Have you, have you enjoyed that Stephen King book about uh, the writer with personal problems fighting evil in small town Maine? <laughs> yes. All 700 of them. Yes. Which one was your favourite? Uh, the Tommy Knockers. Just because that word cracked me up as a kid. Or the dark half. The dark half. The naughty bits. Yes. Um, okay, what was in here? Is that there's a kitchen. And a health kit we don't need. Oh yeah, that's right. Take that. This mansion seems to have partially sunk into the floor because <laughs> of evil. It comes from the ground! <laughs> Like, you know, there's no more room in hell and all that. Mm. So you picked up a blue key, that means you can go back around and use it in the front door by retracing uh, your steps. Ah, uh, completely. Oh, do I have to go through? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> uh, so daisy Sploosh. I completely forgot that I was looking for a key, to be honest. What was your favourite two and a half D shooter? Um, probably a toss up between Duke and um, the original Rise of the Triad. I only played what is it? See, it is, Rise of the Triad. I classify as a one and a half D because <laughs> um, that was before Doom. It was like after Wolfenstein 3D and before Doom. Doom figured out how to do like floors of variable heights. Rise of the Triad hadn't. Mm. Everything was just the same level. Oh yeah, like I, you know, going back and looking at it now, it's just like. Ugh. And to use like sprite, but oh, okie dokie. Well, I guess, that's, I guess uh, that guy climbed in through the roof. Yeah, yeah. Okay, jumping puzzle. Yeah, I figured. But jumping I on uh, sl like slanted surfaces is a science all in itself. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of a little hesitant. I might go poke around. All right, wait, that's where I come in. I'm pretty sure you have to jump. Yeah. Because that thing to to continue. Oh no, I, I figured. I just thought there might be like a hidden secret. Yep. Uh, okay, I push the jump button. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, um, type DN clip. And now walk up onto the ledge to your right. I've lost track of which direction you're facing now. Okay, I think that's it. Oh. Yes, that's, this is where you want to be. 
Remember to turn clipping back on. Because one of the problems with uh, no clip mode in Junior 3D is if you walked into a solid wall, you would instantly die. Or at least something horrible would happen. <laughs> because the game registered it as like um, a crushing area, as in where the ceiling met the yeah. floor. So do you just start using like the old Duke properties after a while, or do you make a new pig cop thing to shoot? Yeah, like, uh, I don't think I ever use any unedited monsters. They're all, like, re sprited They just, the gameplay is exactly the same. I am just getting completely sick of murdering undead Vin Diesel. Oh, well, I don't actually introduce the second major recurring enemy till the second episode, if I'm honest. Ah. I mean, there is a boss, but you've already seen him, just you fought the miniaturized version of him. Oh, Dad, this is gonna hurt. Which, like, a bit of a spoiler, I suppose. RUINED! Am I meant to be down here? Yeah, you're in like an underground cavern full of red water that isn't lava. Just looks like lava. Well, it might not be red, maybe it's just the red lighting. Oh, 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 oh. okay, that's... More fun. That's... that's a tough noodle to navigate. Let's yeah, slanty here. floors, I think... Yeah, how does it do slanty if it can't do... I, is, this, is, it, is it a perspective trick? I don't know. My tele fucking engine programming is a tricky prospect. Oh, Jesus, Christmas dicks. Uh, Your stream of consciousness swearing is quite instructive. And tell us quite a bit about your personal life. You're doing it wrong. Nah, there you it. go. Yeah, when you're on a slant, it's weird. It's like you push the jump button, then you wait a few seconds, fill out a form in triplicate, and then the jump happens. Yeah. And it's a hard thing to sort of adjust to on the fly. And now there's a button. And... This is where the magic happens. A key, yes. This is where I do my writing. He's talking. I can't. I think that was more plot. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is. Alright, so. Uh, now you got the red key. Where did that yeah, go? Yes, so we gotta go out and back, don't we? Um... Or drop down here. Yeah, and back. We've probably got a shortcut. Uh, have, we, have you designed it with a shortcut in mind? I don't think it does. Whoops. No, Would have been nice. There was a tradition in Junior Community Levels to yeah. have shortcuts back to the start. Or just there. back to where you had to use the thing you just got. I think because most of the single player maps in like Junior Community were repurposed as like multiplayer maps. Yes, yeah, so they were so kind of circular. They were all like opened up by the end. Fact do, do, fans. Do, do, do. Where was it? Where Remember was it? the days uh, when games were mission-based and weren't just a continual succession of things. <laughs> Purpose. Drive. Goals. I think the red door was in the kitchen. Yeah. I, I think that was it. Oh, yes, there, there it is. There's a go See, on. the original locks in Junior Game 3D were like these like computer panels yeah. that you needed a key card for. And I didn't want the lock to be like narrower, so I just added like useless there wings either side of it. <laughs> Because that's what locks have, right? Yeah, that's how the door has the red key on it, oh, and that's no. how we're... It's a lard ass. Come on. Now, don't take the obvious path forward, because I'm going to show you how to find the secret level. Ooh. Okay, so not in that hole. No. So follow uh, the right, follow me... the river to that gap there. I fall down and keep pushing forwards. You'll find yourself in a small room. Hey. With a pinball table. Because... The secret levels in Dune 3 were always just sort of like another level. And I wanted to do something actually kind of wacky with my secret levels. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. There should be some shenanigans. So, um, yes. You shall see what this has to offer. So are we seeing our cow level? What? The cow? The, the... Never mind. Are we going to be on the spaceship Red Dwarf entering? Hey! Oh, we're on a giant pinball table. What the... With, oh. with conveyor belts so it acts like you're a pinball. Oh, hey, what the... Well, uh. better start again. Huh. Alright. And the music for this level is uh, the chocolate salty balls from South Park, incidentally. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, That's nine, ten, eleven, twelve. not the same 10, song 11, at all. 12. I hope I don't need a license for these things. Okay. Did you hear that one? No. He said, uh, I hope I don't need a license for these things. Lol. <laughs> Okay, so I assume I've got to get that little button. Actually, I think oh, the point way. of this level is you have to find and press all the buttons. Hmm, okay. It's it's not a, a long level. 
I think... There you go. You can press that one. I think if you press I, a crosshair will appear. That will help your aim. Hey! Alright! Hand air. Can't, can't jump over the walls because you're a pinball. You have to follow the pinball's route. Oh, I, couldn't we find go. The, I couldn't find a way to stop the texture from actually moving if it's a conveyor belt. Jump and jump and jump and jump and jump and uh, jump. Yes, and there's jump. another one. All right, I that's forget a... how many there are. <laughs> I'm not going to be any help. Don't have time to play with myself. That just popped into my head for a second That's there. really all you do, Duke. You are just a big, glorious bucket of wank. Alright, well, how will I know when I've flipped all the duties? Oh, you'll, wait, there's you'll one. You will hear a magic sound. This kicks ass in just so many ways. That one was, this kicks ass in just so many ways. Ooh. <laughs> Don't keep me in suspense. No, I saw that one already. I was like, hey, I see you, Mr. Sneaky. Yes, that's, God what, damn it. that's what two in the same place where it's possible to miss one. That's good design. It isn't really. Can you jump on top of... I'm like, trying. Those, those oh, green... I just went over the wall somehow. Uh, just... I'm not sure how you were able to do that. You probably shouldn't. Well, I did. I've been able to. Oh, Lord. I have no explanation. Just... Of course I can't shoot over that fucking thing. Wow, you're bad at this. Fuck you! <laughs> this is like... Can't even press a button, Gabe. I can. I've been pressing buttons since I was one. For real, like, I'm gonna give this to you and you can fucking do with this shit, because it won't... I can't sit my... I could, I could sit myself still, like... Perhaps I will then. I'll give it here. Admit defeat. Go on. We know that's what you'll do. Well, no, it's, it's not a matter of defeat. Like, if I was sitting here playing this by myself, I'd be aiming at getting it. You're sitting here going, mm. Ah! Alright, got you, the magic sound. Took you long enough. Oh, Gabe wants to get off. Alright, do I have to go over there? Yeah. Okay. You have to jump. Jumping puzzles! Aren't they great? Do 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 do! Do you think um, Duke Nukem. Oh, not Duke Nukem. Um, Half Life actually did them reasonably well? No. In fact, replaying Half Life, I was like, I forgot how many horrible jumping puzzles this game had. What about Half Life 2 once they had the physics engine worked out a little better? Well, they didn't really do it to the same extent. No. I, mean, I never liked jumping puzzles in first person games just because uh, not so much jumping but accurately landing is like like very unintuitive from a mm. first person perspective I don't know I've, it's very easy to like f like just slide off again or overcompensate and like fall back overshoot I mean it's 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 easy to jump onto something if there's like a wall behind it like yeah. a backboard like in basketball you can just at it. but if you have to land accurately on a narrow platform you more than likely fall off again. All right. That's what I didn't like about Dying Light. Getting a lot of uh, a mirror. lot of RPG ammo and Mirror's Edge. I don't know. I I adapt to it reasonably well. I didn't have any trouble with Dying Light. I mean, I thought Dying Light was a bit boring. But... Hmm. I wonder what you're getting all that ammo for. Is he is he here yet? Oh, there he is. An even bigger fatty. The Lardass. Call him by his real name. Healthy at any size. Thin privilege. <laughs> Thin privilege is having arms. Thin privilege is being able to have cake without wanting to stab yourself in the eyes. <laughs> I ate a whole cake yesterday. I so also this, exercised for two hours. This game's plot doesn't have a very great consistency, I must say. It's supposed to be like evil zombies just sort of start like taking evil mindless zombies are taken over. But this creature has signs of having been surgically operated on. And like it is yeah. a Frankenstein-like creation. Oh hey, you killed it. Oh, now I'll yeah. dance on your guts. It's the man. Man, I sound. I sound so very young there. You really do. I'm used to your mature baritone. 
Um, we might have to press use again. Oh. Yes, more plot. Hey. Shall I, shall I dramatic read this? Yes. Um, what voice shall I use? Um, Bane voice? Yes. Chris kicked the creature a few times and a sickly smelling red goo drooled from the gaping chest cavity. No doubt about it, it was dead. Do you feel in control? <laughs> Time thought of that. Time was not on Chris's side. From what he had seen, the whole country was enslaved by these creatures. Probably the whole world. He had to get off this small island and find a way to the centre of world civilization, across the Atlantic to America. Bang. <laughs> An explosion of viscera in front of Chris's eyes. Viscera means blood. Oh, meant guts. Tell me if I'm being too condescending. A gaping hole in his torso. Blood trickled from... There was no actionable verb in that sentence. Blood trickled from the corners of his mouth. Why hadn't he noticed it? Rhetoric. A lone zombie tracking him to the lair of its master. Avenged the hideous mutant's death with both barrels. Mix of tense. Chris felt his soul slip <laughs> away. And the ungodly shadow of the evil was cast upon his twitching corpse. This... Yeah, there's a lot of grammar that needs work in that. Yeah, my writing was kind of shit there. Okay. Continue. Oh, blimey. Why, how long have we been doing this? 40 minutes. I think I'd better take over for episode two. Just oh, for yes, expedience, please. For expediency's yes. oh, sake. Oh, that would be lovely. All right. Uh, um, uh, well, I mean, this, I think... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was me replacing the 3D Realms graphic, I think. Um... What was I going to say? Oh, no, I don't. How am I doing? Well, I mean, this, this gets less points because it's a mod. You know, it's not like sort of an original work. But, um... Yes. I mean, you know, it's, it's serviceable. I've played some shittier fucking Duke Nukem mods, I'll tell you that. That was a jokey reference to uh, Blood. I did, can't hear any of this. Did that come across? No, I'm a deaf end. Um, he went, uh, I live again. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, um, now we're undead, is the plot. Oh, hey, look at that. All yes. right. We've just clawed our way out of a grave. Ah, so do we look like Vin Diesel now? No. We look like Chris Quinn, Demon Hunter. Quinn Diesel. Who still looks um, kind of like um, Paul Crucial. McGann's okay. character from... Um, looks like Paul McGann's doctor. Paul McGann's character from... With Nail and I. With Nail and I, thank you. Oh, with Nail and I. Rubbing Vicks Vapor on yourself to keep warm. Yes. Selling your friend to old theatre queens. Played by Richard Griffiths. The late Richard Griffiths. You he, you were gone uh. too soon, you big fat porky bastard. <laughs> you you'll, great pufter rapist. You'll forever be Dr. Meinheimer from The Naked Gun 2 and a half to me. Glorious movie. Yes. They just don't make spoofy films like they used to. They really don't. Spoof films used to be so good that they'd eclipse the movies they spoofed. Not anymore. Uh, now what? I think Not Another Teen Movie was probably the last one that was actually, you know, made me laugh. Okay, that's on the record. Gabriel loves Not Another Teen Movie. It's legitimately funny, I'll stand by that. He wants to kiss all the hunky boys I do. that were in that. Yeah, dude, Chris Evans. It's not gay if it's Chris Evans, it's perfectly natural. Oh, it was Chris Evans in that? Yeah, it was like one See, of his when first people say Chris Evans, Evans, my first thought is still the Chris Evans I knew from England, who was a ginger DJ. <laughs> and, and called a notorious twat. Okay, I do not know who that is, so... Oop, a button push puzzle. Oh, yes. you know what all the secrets are. This but is I... unfair, this is you're just cheating. Yes, but I remember the uh, code that they gave us in the other room, which will either be... I didn't even see a code. That's the one. Oh, oh uh, that's... Can't say, I didn't... Oh, Holy new... shit, a new thing! It's a new enemy, it's the Liz Trooper, but now it's a ghost. And it shoots uh, freeze freeze thrower ammo at you, and because it's a ghost, it's you can kill it with a shotgun, like all ghosts. Yes, I mean, can't you? Oh, uh, can't you kill your household ghosts with, without a, a shotgun? Well, I killed my household Are ghost you... with a shotgun, but it kept yelling something about being my housemate. I think that's what ghosts do. Uh, it's the new version of boo. I think I see what the problem was there. Uh, also, that ghost, I was out of ammo. That ghost bleeds red blood because I didn't know how to change that. 
Well, it's the ectoplasm the ghost collects. That's what it's trying to get from you. It's going to drain you of your vital. So this level's essence. this level's called adjusting to undeath. I didn't really have any clear idea of what this facility was or what its purpose was. It's just sort of tunnels and stuff. Well, it could be a little bit like um, like a little mine maybe. Well, uh, what's it? Um, come on, brain. Dark Souls. Like the way Dark Souls has like a sense of structure and deliberate design, but also like why is all this here? This is uh, supposed uh. to work, <laughs> but it isn't. Jump on it, maybe. Like nice. a baby skeleton? What the fuck, Crowshaw? Supposed to just press uh, E and it's supposed to work. Bloody hell. Oh, oh, uh. Get to find the right angle, apparently. <laughs> you gotta gently nudge it correctly, a lot like the clitoris. This is, I think this is one of my favorite textures to use in Dune Nuka. The old cliff wall. Did it just take less work to make it sort of look okay? Um, I guess. You can just lather it out there, it's like, look, there you go. Yeah, it, was, it sort of repeats itself pretty quickly <laughs> yeah. there. It does. See, if you look out for it, you can see that a lot in games. I mean, if you look in, like, the, like, the extremely far distance in Dark Souls, you'll find a lot of repeating rock textures that they thought no one would take a really close look at. Well, they weren't counting on Mr. Eagle Eye Croshaw. Well, just to play through Dark Souls enough times. Yeah, I've discovered that when my... Um, hey, more corpses hanging from the ceiling. Dad? Um, it looks like a, very much like a corpse in Doom. Except I... Uh, yeah, yeah, made it look like a civilian. Yes, and if memory serves... Haha, mm -hmm. it's Michael Myers from the Halloween films. Do you see? Um, Do you see? I don't know, I thought it was the dude from The Cure. Fair enough. But that's because all my friends in high school were goths. I don't think we missed any of the pop culture references in the first episode. I think I pointed them all out. Goody! I wouldn't want to miss any. Yes, the uh... Boom! Fuck you, ghost. The ghosts say, so cold, when they die. And the zombies say, thank you. Because ah. they're, they're very polite zombies. These sprites probably took a while to line up. Okay, so you can't walk across the bridge a bit. Uh, oh, you can, look at that. Yes, that's the usual trick. Safety bridge. Do that in Half-Life with the slightly broken bridge and, and the your, valley thing. Yeah. It works just as well there. Notice our changed appearance. <laughs> you see, He's not thing as smarky is, now. He's, he's, you know, withered. The thing is, the and first and uh, third episodes of Duke of 3D had the same like ending screen, but the second episode had a different one because you were on the moon. So I could oh, only yeah. make him undead in the second episode. I had to like base the plot around the fact that he looks different in the second episode. <laughs> okay. That was one of my cunning additions. This may surprise you, but the uh, forest texture are actually made from scratch. Yeah. Although if I take a closer look, it'd probably be less surprising. Well, I mean, you know, considering what you're working with. I think this is one of the, the shittier levels. Because it is one of the maze levels, and it's really, like, confusing. Uh, well, yeah, I hate mazes when there's one texture. Yes. Although Remember I when Half-Life let you put spray paint on shit so you could know where you've been? Yeah, I mean, that, that was, like... That blew my mind when I was like, oh, God, thank you. It was actually designed for the for deathmatch users, but uh, it could be used for the function you described. Oh, I thought that was what it was for. I no, was... it was tagging. Ah. That used to be part of the tradition of online gaming. Never had the internet for online gaming until, like... Probably, you know, the start of around 2003. So, I thought it was a thing to make playing by yourself easier. That's kind of cute. Dude, I had like a 14.4 still till about 1999. Oh, that was brutal. I, I recorded a sound effect of like glugging to uh, make. Oh, new weapon! Except it's just. <laughs> I might actually increase the map. Oh, that. Lord. It's an assault rifle, can't you tell? Yeah. You visionless heathen. <laughs> it's basically just the chain gun. I hope I don't need a license for these things. No, you don't need a license for pipe bombs, Chris. Oh, Chris, you're a silly billy, Chris. Hey. That is adorably amateur, that <laughs> gun graphic. So we're in a forest, and the music for this level is uh, tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree, yeah. which isn't the most action-packed choice of music. 
I kind of for, like uh, a juxtaposition a, of music to action. For like a horror shooter. Been an easy mark for stuff like that. So, um, you'd like sort of a, a game that had a sort of comedic sequence where you had to wait for an elevator and there was sort of like cheesy Muzak playing while yeah, you had while to there fight was a huge off, action sequence going while on. you had to fight off monsters. Yeah. That, that reminds me of a level me. in Blood 2 The Chosen. Well, you're in an elevator and shooting down helicopters with a rocket launcher while the <laughs> elevator's making cheesy music. Oh, like, more recently, and, um, I, it's probably not exactly, but, uh, the fantastic church scene in The Kingsman, where Freebird plays. You keep going on about that film. It's a great, great movie. Okay, then. Based on a Mark Miller comic, I understand. That would make sense. Um, I didn't know that when I went in to watch it. Do we, did we pick anything up around here? I don't know. You scoot about and you run into things and stuff shows up. Yeah, I'm lo I've lost track. Oh. Okay. We Crucial. We don't have any keys. And dare you not know where we're going. Did you flip the switch? Which switch? I don't know. I did, I said, did you flip a switch? I thought there might be a switch around here. I don't know. Maybe just hop down. Maybe it was a destination. Yeah, because this looks like a new area. Well, probably isn't. Nope. Nope. All right. Okay, I'm just going to follow the forest see what happens. There should be a speeder bike reference in here. Hmm. See, that was just traveling too fast through a forest. You'd lose no. control very quickly, and indeed, somebody did. Yeah. How are you supposed to pilot like that? I suppose, like, a friend of mine watches a lot of F1 and says that, you know, once you do F1 for long enough, you, you actually get, like, mutant reaction times. Um... Hey, wait, what about... Alright, no, that's the cliff. Yes, uh, and... Oh, uh, hey. hey. I remember now. So, mm. um, I've been trying to think of ways to bring back some of the old... Clever puzzle. Some of the old drown out spark. And I figured we could experiment with going back to the Q&A. Because we've still got a big pile of questions left over. That sounds fair. Let's ask some... Let's answer some questions people asked, like, six months ago. <laughs> yeah. To encourage people to ask new ones. Hope you remember. So, why don't you pick one then while I kill these ghosts? Um, what effect, if any, does character movement speed have on the pace of a game by Gin... Oh, Jesus. Ganjax <laughs> the Skewer. I think um, that's pronounced Ganja <laughs> the <laughs> Cure. <laughs> 420 blaze it. Well, that's rather a strange right. question. So, if, thank you, 15 year old stoner. I mean, how quickly does the game move if the character moves fast? Well, it moves quite fast because the game's not going anywhere until the character does things. Um. I mean, I suppose it depends on the pace. game. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you talk about pace. I mean, like, how the story's paced. Well, that's the thing, how, yeah, Like, the levels are paced. There's a lot more things in character speed. I think it's more like what, like, how the uh, environment's reacting. Yeah. To create the pace of a game. Because this. Is fairly fast paced, but that's because you're you know it's run and gun. If yeah, there were it's, bigger it's spaces old, with It's old style two and a half D. Yeah. Characters moved at the land speed record in these games. Yeah, it was weird. Do you suppose it was just an accident or did no like why do you think was it an no. active decision do you think or did it just sort of happen? Well, it's prob well it probably doesn't hurt that they are very run and gunny, as you say. I think there's a key there behind you. So there is. Eagle eye. God Ching! knows where it fits, mind. <laughs> a hole. Hey, oh. look at that. Hey, the same building, even. It almost makes sense. <laughs> so we're in some kind of, like, log cabin in the woods. From the smallest gully to the largest ditch. And another Holes key. define who we are and where we are going. I love them key hunting puzzles. <laughs> what other puzzles would you really put in here beyond, like, shoot the thing from a distance or flip the switch? Like, how much... How much well, you know, limited, unique puzzles could you really design in a game like this? Well, you're limited really to um, a thing that opens up a new area, yeah, well, which that's... is basically always going to be keys. Or killing something, maybe. I mean, I mean, having to crawl through a tunnel so you get a line of sight on an explosive that blows up a wall is about as original as it gets, I think. Mm. Um, I don't know, I think character movement speed, to settle the question, can, but I think it has to relate directly to also level design. And also to the like style of game. Yeah. I mean, if characters like run and gun game is characterized by like uh, monsters dying very quickly and uh, getting in, like an immediate response to your actions, so it relies on a fast pace. But if you make it something a bit more methodical, like survival horror, for example, mm. would have a slower pace. And, but that's all right. 
I mean, in something like uh, Project Zero, characters move at a snail's pace. Which one's Project Zero? Uh, it's also called Fatal Frame. Oh, right, yeah. That was deforestation, the level, because it's a forest. <laughs> see, um, oh, just see the clever, the clever thing here. Someone took uh, certain letters to spell out the phrase "help us" and then a blood stain. You think they just write something in blood? <laughs> no. That's gross. That's yes. that's what that that fool did in the first story. That's, yeah, we didn't. Look we didn't that got him. He didn't want to be a poser. My damn posers! Just write "help us" in letters. Like another person. It's sort of like spelling out a help message with a Scrabble board. <laughs> thing that's um probably probably better off just sort of standing there and screaming your head off yeah. if i'm honest that's a strange amount of effort you've gone to okay this is a Let's church go. and uh ghosts appear when you approach their graves Ping. i think that's oh, true of like most of them okay how about that, this one what that, makes a wise what that's a custom texture good that's job that i made the uh, Duke Nukem edit art. This was still in the phase where I mostly made all my art in MS Paint. But Duke Nukem edit art had a button that automatically anti-aliased things, so you can make it look a little bit better than it is. That it actually, that actually reflects the amount of effort put into it. <laughs> so that was you sitting on MS Paint, just clicking pixels in the right area, and then loading it into the Duke edit Nukem art, and then pressing the key that anti-aliases things. Basically, yes. I'll get you with my machine rectangle! Shoot, shoot! Yeah, it's basically just, um... I got you! No, you didn't! I got you! Like a PC tower case with a pipe sticking out of the end, that's <laughs> what that gun is. Hey, what's all this business? That's another custom texture I made. Isn't it good? Slightly like the robot from the first Tom Baker story. If you say so. That's his Doctor Who reference, of course. Yep. There were certain colours in Duke Nukem that uh, would always be unaffected by like darkness. Mm. The bright blue of the ghost's eyes is one of them. So no and matter the red how, of the zombie eyes. No matter how dark and far away they are, so that's the how eyes you get are the... always maximally, maximally bright. Oh, so that's how you get the lit up effect. Yes, same is true of like, characters with the red eyes and yeah. the zombies. Um, okay, what makes a wisecracking character such as Nathan Drake or a protagonist of Sunset Overdrive unlikably smug? And what makes a character such as John Tanner from Drive of San Francisco or the Prince from Prince of Persia Sands of Time endearingly funny? From Louis Dent. I'm glad we finally got around to answering this question. I swear we've answered this one before. Because these are still the old questions. Like, no, I swear I we haven't deleted them or fixed them. I don't think them. we have done this one because this is a question I would quite like to answer. All right, from off having go. answered it. Well, I guess the difference is... Uh, it's interesting that you give the two cases of John Tanner and uh, the Prince from Prince of Persia Sands of Time because they represent two different approaches. John Tanner is basically a fundamentally relatable character in that um, his reactions more or less perfectly mirror the reactions of the player as long as they're into the story in the game. How so? I haven't played a... Well, when you first... Well, the thing with Driver San Francisco, the thing that sort of like puts it on the map for me is it's got this weird mechanic where you can possess other characters, uh -huh. possess their cars. That guy's red! Yes, that means he can teleport. Oh. The same was true of the Liz Troopers, because I couldn't be bothered or didn't know how to change the program in there. <laughs> the thing with John Tanner is that um, he's aware of the fact that he's acquired this ability to like possess other drivers. There's a dead priest being crucified. Oh, is that what that is? And um, when he first gets the power, he's sort of confused by it. But uh, as he learns to use it, he starts like having a lot of fun with it, and mm. in a way that sort of reflects the player learning to have fun with it. Right. So he becomes relatable, you sort of like him for that reason. Jesus loves the little children. And the, and the way the prince is likable is because, um, like, I think, if memory serves, if I go up to this, uh, this picture and press the use key, then Chris leaves his little artistic touch. Take that, organized religion. Yes. Don't know how you'll come back from having your nose blooded like that. You've read the God Delusion, you say. It's the prince from the Prince of Persia's Hands of Time is a, is a douchebag. and But he's intended to be. You're supposed to laugh at him for being such a douche. And it's one of my favourite romances in games. Because it does the whole arc where, you know, a person is redeemed by romance. But they sort of, like, they become aware, the prince becomes aware of the attraction about halfway through. And normally, like, when you realise the romance, that's sort of the end of the romantic arc. But in this case, the prince just is continues to be exactly as much a douchebag as he was. He goes, um, he goes, she said my love when she thought I was asleep. 
I think I'll I think that means I'll have to marry her. Yes, I've decided. I will marry her. That'll tame her insolence. <laughs> And it's so, uh, and he's such up. an asshole, and it's so great. But uh, part of his arc is that he sort of becomes a better person, like, like that. Because, because the romantic arc continues because he has a vision of like Farah the princess betraying him. Hmm. So he like that sort of like put stimmies. Does his, a switch in there do something? Stimmies his romance plans. Yeah, it opened that. And um, then he sort of like the rest of the, the story is him sort of learning to trust and sort of fucking stuff up because he didn't trust her. <laughs> And and it's all very well done. That's why I like him because he's an intentional douche. Nathan Drake, on the other hand, is a monster. He is a fiend. He spends his whole time murdering his fellow humans, and uh, in in certain ways, a character presented in such a way can be a sort of anti-hero. Kratos, for example, is just sort of fascinating to watch. <laughs> but Nathan Drake is so unconscious of his own monstrosity, and he has no like legitimate reason to be doing the things that puts him into positions where he has to murder all these people his only real motivation is I want to find the treasure before they do and not really for any fine motives like Indiana Jones wanting to put it in museums he just wants to be rich before they can (laughs) that's why I think he's a monster and a very fundamentally hateful character and he never changes he has no arc he starts the game as a douche he ends the game as exactly the same douche and like three games he's been through have exactly the same arc. He like goes after a treasure. The treasures actually turns out to be evil. His friends get killed. Um, like sometimes, but he never learns anything. Same plot every game. He's like, we're gonna go after this treasure so we can be rich, and it'll turn out to be horrible and a, and an, an evil weapon that the monster that the villains want to use as a weapon. And uh, just we never really notice this pattern. Same thing over and over again. And what was the other example? The, sun, the protagonist of Sunset Overdrive? Yeah, he's just an unlikable douchebag. Like well, that's, a, like I think a, that's a modern thing of like... He's just a smug, um, let's all laugh at all the other nerdier characters around us without having presented any evidence for being like a, a more likable character. Well, I think that's the modern thing of just everything being really fucking internet-y. You know, like Possibly, fucking, yeah. You but know, it, what's but Borderlands also, 2, where it's just like, uh, okay, I get it. <laughs> there's a sort of forced self-awareness about it as yeah, well. That's, I think the Borderlands game is good. I mean, I'm thinking of, like, there was a particular gag in Sunset Overdrive where Splurge. somebody t- somebody says, like, like, like uh, we need to do go to here and do such and such. That's, uh, the only available thing that can achieve it is uh, X, Y, and Z. And then the main character looks to camera and goes, how convenient. And it just reminds me of a fucking, like, uh, a modern comedy film. <laughs> self-awareness without, or well, self-reference, but not self-aware, if you see what I mean. Like, they don't really grasp self-awareness. They're just you think self-awareness should be self-deprecatory? Like- well, when I say, yeah, self-awareness, I suppose, means um, having an awareness of your own limitations. Whereas this is just self-reference, mm. saying, look at us, we're a game. Probably the difference between, like, early Kevin Smith and later Kevin Smith. Possibly. So that's my in-depth answer to that question. Do you have any addition to that? Um, I'm trying to think of examples of... I think, for me, one of the things that pops up when stuff like this happens is the difference between um, plot, characters... Plot, backstory. Yeah. So, In... this, so we're a writer. This, this level is a library. Yeah. It says Librom. We were going to go here for a book signing, but then we it was cancelled because we were committed to an asylum. Background plot. The best uh, way to do plot. No, no. Um, and the music is paperback writer by the Beatles. Sorry, I continue. The difference between... like The, the one that always stands out to me is the difference between... Um, like, what's her name? Um, Lara Croft in the Tomb Raider movie. Where she's completely unflappable. Like, any, everything that happens like a robot bursts through the wall. She doesn't even like sort of blink. She's just like, I have the solution to what this. What are you talking about? That's a strong female character. That's what how all it? female characters should be, always. <laughs> Otherwise you're sexist. Um, and then you get like Jackie Chan or Indiana Jones, and Indiana Jones isn't even that competent. He gets through on a combination of dumb luck and just. There's a there's usually a huge amount of plots in Indiana Jones films that that there will be no plot at all if Indiana Jones hadn't been there. I mean, yeah. he's the one who finds the Ark for the Nazis. Mm. He's the one who like helps the evil people find the Grail and everything else. 
And Temple of Doom, he gets brainwashed for a brief period. Mm. And, like, he does all that. If he just left well enough alone... Then things wouldn't be so bad. Yeah, I think, I think Nathan Drake has something similar. Um, but, yeah, like, well, they, I, like Indiana Jones is flawed. Yeah, and... Like, or he, it, he winces, he gets hurt, yeah. he gets beaten up. And that's, that's an integral part of what makes Jackie Chan's movies so great, is he spends most of the movies getting his ass kicked and wincing and hurting and going, ow, 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 oh, the God, this all hurts. And, again, that makes him, A, relatable, and B, builds threat. So the, suddenly, when the boss guy enters the room, it's like, oh, you know, he's gonna Jackie Chan's gonna get his fucking ass kicked. Hey, let's put locks in a room far away from the doors they open. <laughs> but I was smart enough to put security cameras next to them, and so you could the see. Um, and that carries through to this sort of thing, where you know, what makes him a douche and what makes him, um, you know, relatable just comes down to that element of flaw. Yes, yes, a flaw is very important. It's like, when you're like writing up uh, profiles of characters, if you're making like a fictional work, you should always like uh, add a heading for like uh, special abilities and talents, and another heading for flaws. And if you're smart, you'll put one flaw for every uh, like positive quality. Yeah, and keep and, it you know, you, you, those can even relate quite closely. You know, one begets the other, sort of thing. Yes, and uh, please note there's a certain amount of misinterpretation when it comes to f- character flaws. I'm just too good at everything. I'd see it alienates me from the other humans. Yeah, that's not a character flaw. <laughs> having a problem Humble with authority. brags aren't flaws. Having a problem with authority, that's not a character flaw. Uh, I just, I, I play by my own rules. Yeah, playing by my own rules, not, not a flaw. A lot of things are not flaws, but are usually presented as such. Uh, being very, very angry all the time, not a flaw. <laughs> that helps you get shit done. That seems to be a flaw that comes up in video game protagonists Being very, very angry all the time is just stupid. Like, that much- maintaining that kind of energy is just difficult. Yeah. Grr, I'm- I smolder with generic rage. Yeah, some, like, and- like, the King of Fighters series has some of the worst for that. Like, Iori Yagami, like, one of the sort of, you know, main antagonists of Kyo, has just been, like, has had a blood feud against Kyo for, like, the last 15 years. And it hasn't gone anywhere or really done anything, and it's just kind of sad now. Overconfidence, I'd say, is an overused flaw. But uh, that can be a flaw as long as it's, like, counteracted well. If the other characters are kind of like... Or if, again, if, 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 they, if, if like, Indiana Jones, you fuck up and fail, it's like, I can fuck, yeah. I can solve this problem. Or, um, if you Big pay, Trouble the, in Little China is perfect for that. The point is, you pay a price for your flaw. Yeah. If you're overconfident but succeed anyway, it's not a flaw. Yeah. You're, right, you're rightfully confident. <laughs> Oh yeah, I think uh, Big Trouble in Little China is great for that. This is where Jack Burton thinks he can take on everything and do everything, and he is fucking ineffective for the most of the movie. Spends most of the you know final fight pinned under a guy. I just want to point out that this uh, library has a quite a large occult section in room twelve. Mm. See, uh, I've never seen a library with an occult section. See, I use um, I create the texture for the map. But uh, for the maps in different places, I placed a separate decal dot to indicate our position. Ah. Clever, nurse. That's using the noodle. Um, I uh, finished with that question. What are about some cameras? other likable assholes that like, maybe we can think of some more that will uh, help round out this? I quite like the main characters of Bottom, <laughs> but I think they work because they work together. Oh, new weapon. Oh. It's the magic. It's the magic hand. All right, now. I'm oh, and a new monster as well. That's, that's bunch actually, of stuff. It's the octobrain, but in this case, it's a poltergeist. <laughs> the magic hand is a weapon that turns monsters into another thing. Sometimes a pickup. Oh yeah, you told me about this. Sometimes a pickup. Sometimes uh, a another monster. another monster. It's usually a pickup though, so it is a, usually beneficial. But you know, there's that gamble in the there's back of your mind. Yeah, you gotta gotta weigh that risk. This replaces um, the freeze thrower. Well, I mean, the you know the, the characters in bottom are so dismally pathetic. Yes, that's what makes it. Yes. That's what makes, everything they, they are, do is funny because it's just, it's self destructive. They most have. Of it. I don't think they have any positive qualities at all. It's all flaw, really. Yeah, but it's they're at, they are the literal bottom of society. <laughs> they are tragedies. Hey, ammo and more ammo. New, 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 new. You get more. Okay, how do you get more ammo for the hand? You have to find magical essence. Uh, okay. Do the guys turn into magical essence ever? Uh, they might do. Yeah. Hey, I think they do, actually. <sighs> but, I mean, that's... Like, the, the the more recent games did a decent job of it, but I think, like, the, the one that I always draw back to is, yeah, the um, Tomb Raider movie. Because it was just... This person is completely unflappable in absurd situations. There's never a bit of, like, wow, glad I got through that. This yeah, is always... I've never liked characters that come across as too capable. Yeah, because what's the threat? Yeah. It's like, and, oh, how boring. And I mean, you know, 
Then yeah. you watch a Jackie Chan movie, and this man is insanely capable. Like <laughs> capable. Yeah, like you know, he's fucking Jackie Chan, but he pulls it through by wincing and being scared and frightened throughout the entire goddamn thing. Yeah. Always looking just as surprised he's alive, which in certain circumstances were completely valid because he was nearly freaking killed. Um. um. Q from Star Trek. Um, there's, there's a character who's like, uh, he's omnipotent, so he's not exactly flawed, but um, his the drama comes from his like redoubtable emotional state. His capriciousness. It's just, yes. I'll do what I like. Why? Because you're ants to me. Oh, that's. Uh. I'd also give uh, Doctor Bashir from Star Trek: Deep Space Nine as an example of a character who is overconfident, skilled, and usually succeeds, but still works because other characters realize that he's kind of a twat. And also, <laughs> he's, he he's kind, kind of, of socially inept as well. Well, yeah, wasn't he some kind of mutant? Like, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was um, genetically engineered to be perfect. Huh. And it was like, that's like illegal in Starfleet, so he was like, had a center of some drama. Here's the next secret level. Yeah, I was going to say, the, uh, not allowed to go genetically modifying, that's, uh, that's a bit of a no-no in the Star Trek universe. There was a little oh. bit of a kerfuffle over that, actually. This seems to be quite a mundane office. Where could this secret level be taking us? Public toilet in the UK. No, actually... The young Yahtzee Croshaw saw his first penis. Kick off in just so many ways. We're going to a shrink. <laughs> now we're a tiny mouse-sized man. Oh, tiny mouse-sized poltergeist. What does yellow do? Oh, is he throwing shit at you? Yeah, he, he throws um, mortars. Huh. Right, I think that uh, gives us a good answer for how to make characters that aren't twats. What about the Bonds? Like, how do you think they James fit Bond. In? Yeah. Because, I mean, they, they're quite... I think they come off quite differently depending on who's playing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The thing about James Bond is that he's pretty much, like, an admitted power fantasy. Mm. And that's an element that's very much present in the character. He's like... We want to see him succeed all the time. We know he's going to succeed. And we sort of want to live through his successes. He's like the perfect man. But at the same time, yeah, he is like a misogynistic dude. <laughs> I look like you want to look. I fuck like you want to fuck. Yeah. I mean, there has to be something that's like the, the far end of um, fantastical action. Mm. And that he pretty much embodies it. I don't know, again, I think the I think the tone of Bond can be incredibly different depending on like well, the, thing the Roger that, Moore the, ones were sort of I goofy. guess the thing with Bond is that it's important to make characters feel like they're in like an impossible situation. And because Bond is so capable, the situations he you're in have to be like Ridiculous. ridiculously impossible. And I think that that's usually what happens. I think the situations are appropriately extreme enough for that character. I also think it can change significantly depending on the sort of background of the character. Like Bond is an insanely well-trained, crazy, super-secret agent. So yeah, I don't to, mind if he does crazy shit. Yeah, he when has to like, work at it. Yeah. But when you get into... I mean, I, I can't remember exactly. Is Nathan Drake meant to have anything but a history degree? Well, he was a street kid. And he, like, learned his, like, skills on the streets. All right. And so he was no. mentored by uh, Sully. All right. So I mean, I'm just going to go with, like, a, a no. Like, so like, no. The so if you're him, asking if he's got military training, then no, he doesn't. Yeah. Like, that's... This is what, if you explain away the fantastical abilities, then you kind of you validate it by adding the the, the work, like someone did work to accomplish this. Like I think yeah. there was a weird Jet Li movie with DMX in it, and for some reason DMX could fight. Who's, like who's DMX? He's a rapper. Okay. X go and give it to you. I suppose he I should guess. It if it's just three initials, it's always going to be either a rapper or some kind of video format. <laughs> DMX could very well be a video format. Yes. Um, but yeah, and oh then in a DMX DM could just fight to almost to the level of Jet Li for no adequately explored reason. And oh that just my, did my head. My DMX codec is interfering <laughs> with my video drivers. Oh, that oh, always happens. No, that's that's oh, why, yeah. This, uh, this key's making a mug rise out of the desk. Why the fuck not? This kicks off and just now we're going into computer. Yes, we're traveling inside the computer. I think you'll like where this leads. Full of ghosts. Yeah, of course. Where else would ghosts be? This where the cats live? I think with James Bond as well is that um, I wouldn't say that we're totally in that character, if you see what I mean. Yeah. We're not like, sort of relating to him. He's like The things he does are as much a surprise to us as, as viewers. Mm. I'd say there's a degree like, of that with like um, Doctor Who. Like, uh, the the, 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 yeah, the, the Doctor's not meant to be the character insert by any stretch. Yeah, they're, they're the enigma. Yeah. You could, all, you could argue that the Bond girls are supposed to be like the audience surrogate. Mm-hmm. 
They're like, um, like, um, yes, look, the, look at this amazing person. All the assistants and doing great things. Yes. We better, sometimes they did really He's so great, we should probably take all our clothes off and hump him. This is Pac- yeah. This is Pac-Man, by the way. The ghosts had corresponding colours, accordingly. Yeah. Was that obvious? And you have to press the buttons in the oh, four corners. Is that, oh, is that... Who's that, Clyde? I don't know. The green one. Inky, pinky, fuck not. Uh. I wonder, does like the, the warp thing work? It Ooh. does! Ooh! There you go. And now I'm lost. Look at that. Yeah, oh, yes, we need to oh. get into the centre. And that's it. For the secret yeah. level. You know, you know, all told, I still kind of like that secret level. Oh. I hate a lot of my old stuff, but I still kind of like that idea. Well, there's a question that uh, will be useful for you. Uh, what is the worst flaw of the work you hold closest to heart by Don't Ask 4470? See, I interpret that as meaning works we enjoy as well as works we created. Yeah, but I mean, like, it, it'd be something that you'd say is bad, but I think has, has like, you like anyway. Well, if we're talking about the thing we like most, for me, I guess that would be Silent Hill 2. The worst flaw in that, I would say, is probably the puzzle logic. Like, uh, there's a sequence... Oh, yeah, the music smoke on the water, by the way. Because we're in a waterworks. Like, there's a puzzle in the prison in Silent Hill 2, where you have to open a trapdoor. And you do so by combining a horseshoe, a wax doll, and uh, a lighter. Which <laughs> creates an impromptu handle. Are uh, you, you fucking to, serious? It allows you to open the trapdoor, even though the wax puzzle, probably wouldn't set hard that enough. That to be able to create enough no. bond <laughs> no. to pull it out. <laughs> that wouldn't work. Terrible idea. I am so glad you're doing this stage. Yeah, this looks like butt. This is the jumpy one. <laughs> Jumping quarter core. See, that's, yeah. That's using the old noodle. Um. Oh, Floor of a work I hold close to. What's the heart. thing? What's the work? What's the created work you hold dearest? With everything? Doctor Who, perhaps? Well, I'll, I'll go with that just because it's an easy and obvious one. Um. So, yeah. Speaking of floors, this is a floor-tastic conversation so far. <laughs> Jesus, where do I start with the floors in Doctor Who? Um, so what's, what, let's let's uh, break it down. What's your least favorite Doctor Who, let's say, episode? Um, the objectively worst episode is Time Lash. What happens in that, then? Um, okay, so... Which, which Doctor was that? That was the sixth, obviously. So, Colin Baker? Yes, Colin Baker, which is sad, because Colin actually had... It's sad that I knew that off the top of my head. Uh, I Colin didn't even watch had Doctor Who. one really good story, which I think was indicative of the quality that his series could get to when sort of left to its own device. Let's unplug the waffle lion. Uh, Vengeance on Varos. That's actually an excellent episode. But uh, Time Lash... Okay, Time Lash ends with the Doctor... Flying off in the TARDIS, fixing the problem, and then when Perry asks him how he fixed the problem, he goes, Oh, it's a good trick, I'll tell you someday. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a cock block. That is inexcusably awful, even for Doctor Who. And I mean that's all the flaws of Doctor Who, from like low production values to hammy acting to just every single problem you could um, think about that Doctor Who could have was present in spades in Time Lash. I recommend you look you know, if you're a mod Doctor Who fan, look it up. Um, what I'm hearing is that Doctor Who's only as good as the writer. Well, it's such a vast concept. Like, you've got a lot you can do with each episode of Doctor Who. Like, you can do, you know, so many different things with it. But yeah, it is heavily writer-dependent. A good writer like Ben Aronovich can um, do Remembrance of the Daleks, which I think is still one of the absolute best episodes ever made. Uh, a bad writer will produce things like, you know, Time Lash or Love and Monsters. That's one of the modern... Yeah, that, turds. That's a quirky episode, though, isn't it? The sad thing about Love and Monsters is the first half of it, before they add the monster, it's actually one of my favorite episodes because I think it touches on something. It was one of those um, low budget episodes, wasn't it? Where yeah. They, the, where the doctor was off, like, the actor else, was yeah. filming like the filming on location somewhere. Yeah. So they just did an episode with mostly d- different characters. And it's all about these people who've kind of been at the periphery of the Doctor's adventures. Which yeah. makes a lot of sense. Like, that's actually a really valid and interesting sort of idea to deal with. And then they add this monster that was sort of designed by, like, a Blue Peter um, viewer. And it just goes to hell and just becomes one of the worst pieces of crap ever. Wasn't the monster played by... Some British comedian Peter, Peter Kay, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. 
Yeah, he's and a, a woman becomes a blowjob tile, and yeah, it's just. I do remember that. Yeah, like that is. It is I mean, just Tana, fucking awful. I mean, why do you have to bring up the blowjob thing? Oh, look, a clever set piece. The water came down through that pipe to fill the room. Yeah, like that was. I think we're coming up on another pop culture reference. Ooh, is it Waterworld? No. Shit. Jaws? No. It's like, get water out of your mind. It's like completely unrelated. Oh, okay. Just think in terms of things I might have liked around this time of my life. <laughs> That's why Rorschach and Ash were there. Um, I, I don't know. Well, probably won't guess it. No. Uh, I, uh, yeah, it's past here. Well, I'll see when I get to it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, Doctor Who, like... The continuity of Doctor Who went to hell, like, really quickly. It never had, like, this, you know... Well, it never show. had continuity, did no. it? Like, history just kept changing. Changing, yeah. Um, I, you know, I just see that as part of it. Doctor Who, and even sort of what is and isn't in canon you know, these days, is just grey. Like, it's a show about time travel where the universe gets remade every think, other week. I just think it's, you know... I think this is this will be it. <laughs> so, wait, this is because you liked Pokemon or because you didn't like Pokemon? It's because guilt Pokemon was kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. I, I watched the cartoon show, but I used to do it, like, with the sound really low on my bedroom TV. So no one would know I was watching Pokemon. Because, <laughs> like, 16, 17 I was. Yeah, that was, in, that was around year, year 12. Felt like I should have been above that sort of thing by that age. Ah. I used to, I used to deliberately I I miss was... my first train to to, to school because I, I just was wanted to Pokemon see Ash Ball. becoming the very best. It was he was inspirational that way. All right, you're falling down, so now you're gonna have to go back. The very best, like no one ever was, incidentally. Catch 'em all, is my real test. Oh, oh, where does this? You have to go up there. Yes. See, this is probably one of the things I hate about these old 2.5D um, jumping puzzles, is the areas you're supposed to jump to aren't signposted well. Well, not in this, no. As we there said. were some pro games that had this problem as well, though, where it's just, what, where do you have to jump? That thing that looks like a glitch, that, that's where you have to fucking go. Eat my magic hand. Whoa, right. <laughs> pipe bomb jamboree. Pity I never used pipe bombs. No. Uh. Did you ever really use them much in Duke? Cause I don't Not really. Uh, I mean, they kind of killed the pace for me. Might as well just use the shotgun. I mean, you use them to blow up walls when you see an obvious yeah. like, wall crack. But I wouldn't use them offensively. Not usually. Well, maybe if something was like pursuing me around a corner and I had some time. But, <laughs> I it, but I'd, I'd usually have plenty of ammo for my other stuff. Yeah. The game didn't really lend itself to sort of time or traps, really. And I was saving my Devastator ammo for the boss. Because it would die in like two seconds. It really, yeah. It, it was really fucking broken, the Devastator. What is it? Well, it's the explosive damage, but like a billion to yeah. a second. Multiplied many times. I don't know what the fuck this facility is supposed to be. We came from a waterworks to this sort of nice little nightclub with a fountain. Yeah, I was going to say it's like an office, but then there's sort of booths. I'm like, I don't know. Oh, and there's a... On a dance floor. Doesn't your office have a dance floor? <laughs> you should complain to the union. Yeah. There's a switch back there. Of course there was. Eagle eye. Yeah. Hey, look at Can't that. Can't use the toilet without, like, <laughs> being approved by the bartender. You have to ask the staff, politely. Wait, I want to see if, like, he says something when we'd have a piss. <sighs> better out than in. I... Oh, did you hear that? R. He said better out than in. Oh, okay. I agree. Yes. Um, have you found a key? Oh, you did. Ooh, ghosts! Uh, uh, ghosts in, like, broad hey. daylight. Hey! <laughs> Get love, out of the way, I'm killing these ghosts. I love that the, the, the undead are wearing muscle tees. That just <laughs> tickles me. Like, every time I see it, I'm just like, yeah, I'm dead. But I make time for my workout. Way. No excuses, people. No excuses. Even in death. I think when you become a zombie, you're like, you become really swole and your sleeves tear off. <laughs> It'll be becoming a zombie. Will be like the new uh, synthol. And a shotgun Just... grows out of your chest. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to become a zombie then? That's everything a man could want. No swole way. arms, chest shotgun. When did swole become a word? I've been hearing it everywhere lately. Um. Uh. Probably fit. I'm gonna blame fit. Um. It may have hovered around before that in actual bodybuilding communities. So but the first time I ever interacted with it was on fit. Are you ready for a gimmick level? Yes. Because here comes a gimmick level. None of the ends of stages in this game look like the ends of stages. I just want to... Yeah, because usually in Junior 3D, there'd there be an auto-destruct button. Yeah. But I sort of eschewed that, because I couldn't really work it into context. So 
I just used the thing where if you step into a certain area, the level ends. Which was uh, a special, like, sector code. Okay, so you're on a train, I'm guessing. Yeah, look how it moves. See how it moves. That's actually not bad. Duke didn't have a train. No, Blood did, though. No, oh, I don't think I ever really played Blood. Blood was the first game that did this. Oh. And I sort of nicked the idea. <laughs> so I ripped it off shamelessly. Now, even though I'm in God mode, I have to avoid standing on there. Because how it works is that it teleports you to a crushy room. Ah. To and a pitch black crushy room and then sort of says, Yeah, you died somehow. And as you have God mode on, will it crush you with God mode on? Will the crushy uh, still work? Yeah, but we won't die. It'll, it'll just be like crushing endlessly every single game cycle <laughs> until we come. Until, until we are sick of the noise. Nope. Until Zeus forgives us. It'll be a long fucking time. Uh, why don't you pick another question if you're done complaining about when Doctor Who's shit? <laughs> Um, yeah, actually, what was... I don't even remember the question to even answer it. Uh, the, uh, the biggest flaw of the thing you hold to closest just to heart. all of it. Just... Every every, every major complaint for Doctor Who is... Any other uh, created work you want to nominate? Um... No, I'll stick with that. That'll, that'll be me for that. That'll be me for now. Um... Okie dokie! I guess the other work I hold closest to heart is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Because that was, like, the f uh, my yeah, first influence. Good. When did you read that first? When I was like eight years old, my yeah, par parents got me the book for Christmas. Oh, like the, Dad, om like... the omnibus with the first three books in it. The first, first four oh, books. Yeah, actually. the increasingly inaccurate. Yeah. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Trilogy. There was after this was before Mostly Harmless came out. There was another omnibus released with all five. Mostly Harmless, I didn't mind. I still don't really. It, it kind of occupies a grey canon area to me. I, I haven't think read when the you, most. I think when you one. talk about like acknowledging the flaw. I think Mostly Harmless sums it up pretty well. Mm. It just wasn't that good, because you could tell he was kind of sick of the, of the series at that point. Why do you suppose he wrote it? I mean, did he ever give um, it a sort of... A... Well, the radio series was hugely popular, yeah. and he wrote the book as a spin-off, I suppose. Oh, no, no, I mean, I know why the book, like the original books, but I mean, there was a big gap between... Um, God, what was the fourth one? Is, um, so Long and Thanks for All the Fish? Yeah. Uh, wasn't there a big gap between it and Mostly Harmless? I think so, yeah. Explains why I got an omnibus that didn't have it, I suppose. Yeah. I think uh, he created The Hitchhiker's Guide originally as the radio series. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> Accidentally <laughs> stepped off the train and now this is happening. Break, 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 break. And now I'm not sure where we are. Um, maybe switch off God mode. Let me, let me do in the end clip. Okie dokie. Going uh, beyond no a place of mind. No Journey idea where we are. Into the fifth universe. Yeah, it's just... I don't... Yeah, there, uh, we, go. there we go. Okay, okay. Let's, let's start again oh. then, I guess. That was fun. On a psychotropic journey into the depths of what is his name, Doctor Quinn? Chris Quinn, medicine woman. Yes, I was going to say, where did you get the doctor from? Doctor Quinn, medicine woman. So I've watched um, too much of that show. That was one of those things that just kept popping up on daytime TV while I was smoking the pot. So, any other like works you hold very close to heart? Um. I'm trying to think of ones that have, like, massive flaws that I kind of, sort of, I suppose video game-wise, um, Resident Evil. I've never, I never liked the first Resident Evil. I think it only got good with Resident Evil 4, and then it went good, and then got bad again. Uh, well, I, you know, had, like, some quite interesting experiences with Resident Evil when it first came out for the PlayStation. Yes. Um, just playing it with, because the, it... I think the sound design on it was really good, and there's, there's just the, the, the zombie noise still from that first game, or from, you know, the... I'd say the best way to experience it is the GameCube or, rem or HD remake that they're putting around now, but, um... You know, the zombie noise gave me the willies, I had rented... I'll give you the willies! <laughs> I'd rented a PlayStation and skimped on the memory card, so... Oh. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't die or save. Rookie mistake! Oh, blame me, I know. Um, so I couldn't die or save. And I had, yeah, for, for that weekend I'd rented Resident Evil and, um, Resident I'm, Evil I'm and just, uh, Street Fighter I'm, Alpha. I'm gonna I think, save here, I think. <laughs> Ass. Um, yeah. 
So I had Street Fighter Alpha, which was, you know, tons of fun you could play without the memory card. Um, oh, pfft. Oh, titty bits. This is badly designed. <laughs> I demand to speak to the manager. Who is responsible for this? Um, and yeah, that actually, it added real crazy fucking tension. And I mean, the game is ass from this perspective. Like, it is a fidgety... The ability to run around the zombies in it is almost non-existent, which is kind of frustrating, because that's a big part of how you have to... Jesus fucking Betty. I was, could... I've been doing this in the past. Um, but I still have a good soft spot for the early Resident Evil games. Um, I just think that the graphical overhaul for the GameCube remake, or, you know, you, again, you can get the HD remake, which is essentially the one they put on the GameCube uh, on Steam now. Which, if you haven't played it, I don't know, if you're into survival horror or you're curious, I'd, I'd say it's worth getting. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's that. Well, moving on. Um... Okie dokie. Question your favorite me, Team Fortress boy. classes are Scout and Medic. What are your least favorite, Kayshaw? Hmm. Hmm. Well, my least favorite Scout, I'd say. Well, I guess in terms of, like, the character, or... Fucking, can you jump that bit? I'm not sure you can. In terms of, like, least favourite character or least favourite to play as, least favourite character would probably be the Scout, because he's a twat. <laughs> least favourite to play as... Mm. That's the weird thing. I mean, the Sniper is kind of my favourite character character, but it, it's shitty to play as in Australia, because you kind of need a decent connection to be able to shoot accurately like that. I've never been good at Sniper Fuck. characters. So I could never play as a sniper. I, I, I actually played Scout um, when it first came out a lot. And uh, really, really enjoyed it. Got really good at just sticking my head out and blasting. Um, oh, there we go. Why didn't I do that in the first place? You're a filly. Who's a filly bum? I used, to, the filly bum. I used to mainly play Medic when I did play TF2. Because it was easy. You just keep other people alive and they have to worry about the actual strategy and <laughs> shit. That's what I didn't like about Evolve at old bollocks. As I didn't like about Evolve, one of the many things I didn't like about Evolve is that although when you're the medic, although you're the medic and your main job is to keep people alive, your your other job is also to like tag the monster when you first see it, and they're like, you're still expected to do things. And stick targets on stuff. It seems like that that's, that should be outside of a medic's purview. That should be like the trapper's job. That does sound like something a trapper would do, actually, is mark the target. Yeah, I, just... I, I haven't played the game, I don't know what to say. Well, it's don't, it's shit. <laughs> okay, we're in, like, the goods area of the train. Hullabaloo. Um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed the hell out of playing Scout when I was younger. Um, the one character I could never get the hang of gameplay-wise was Demo Man. Yeah, I never played him much. There, uh, there's, like, de people who can play Demo Man are kind of peculiar, I think. Well... Is a primarily a defensive class. Yeah, but I've seen like you know you, you see like I had a friend who was you're supposed insanely to like insanely into it. You're supposed to defend areas and target engineer buildings as a demo man. That's your job. I've seen aggressive demo men, like ones who can actually run him as a. Very yeah, well, it depends class. on the map style. If it's like a control point map, you want to be the you want to be like mining the control points yeah. in case the enemy gets on them. But uh, your like, I'd say your main job is dealing with engineer buildings. Besides the spy, you he, suppose we'll ever see like a well. full sequel to Team Fortress 2? No, they're just going to keep adding more gameplay modes and hats to the existing thing. Yeah. Why? So why bother like forcing people to buy a whole new thing? They can just add more stuff, and people will pay money for it. I miss the simplicity of the, of the original. Now there's like a friend of mine going. I've got this. Like my housemate plays it a lot. And he's like, I've got this thing that does this, and I've stacked it with this. So now I've got like a pyro who's a complete dick sack, and I'm like that. Yeah, I was going to uh, chew away at the sort of original. We pressed a switch that opened up the carriages. No indication of that, by the way. Yeah. That would probably. Well, that was just how it happened in these old games. Like, Duke Nukem did that. You push a button, it's like something happened. I'll tell you what was really bad for that was Hexen. Remember when we were playing that? <laughs> said, a door has opened in another world. Thanks, Hexen! <laughs> okay, another one. Like. Help me out here. How the hell was this switch wired to a door in another world? They got quantum wiring in the fantasy world now? MAGIC! And why the hell would anyone keep the switch for that door here of all places? Yeah, how is that convenient? Oh, yeah. See, this was replacing, like, certain assets that... You know in Junior 3D, like, the third level... 
you're about to approach the exit and like it gets blocked off and you're imprisoned and the monsters say we're gonna fry your ass yeah, oh, I, yeah I took the code that. for that but put it there and then changed the text to the train is now slowing down I huh. didn't take it. so it just like pauses for a few seconds and then goes to the next level so now we're well in well played mr crochet so now we're in death row airport do you get it do you get it gabriel <laughs> Uh, man, it's a good thing you stopped that uh, train when you did. Yes, that could have ended poorly. <laughs> yeah. it? All the space for those repeated deaths. Oh, pile of junk. You're a great enemy. Yes, always arranged in exactly the same way. <laughs> I think uh, the music here is Ticket to Ride by the Beatles. I had a lot of Beatles middies, alright. I can kind of actually hear this one. That is weird that you had a lot of middies at all, let alone Beatles middies. I suppose people used to make those. Yeah, you just go searching for them. Huh. That was the internet before MP3s. Do you remember this joke from Rob Blank? Stoker Zola? No. Well, here it is again. It was in the Goody. store in Rob Blank 2. Surely you remember that great joke. Sure. There is a, like, a visual gag in this level that I am actually quite proud of. Oh, I look forward to this then. That be fun. Won't be seeing that for a while. Right? Oh, nipples. Yeah, when I designed this level, I wasn't that familiar with how one lays out an airport. <laughs> it's another case of let's just keep adding stuff until we stop. Fair enough. It's worked so far. Why change a winning formula? Well, quiet. It's the fart ghost. No, uh, it's giggling. That was the sound of me giggling into my shitty microphone. <laughs> um, Man, we must be a really famous author. Oh yeah, you've got your name up in airport. Our posters are everywhere. Yeah, we sell airport blockbusters. Come and get it from the duty free shop. Good Alongside night. the latest Jackie Collins and the latest Dan Brown. Is Jackie Collins still alive? I have no idea. Probably not. <laughs> The entity known as Jackie Collins is continuing well, if, to write. Well, if she is, it probably wouldn't be anything close to what you'd want in life. <laughs> it's Have you it's paid life, but it's not living. But not as we know it, Jim. And poor Nimoy finally oh. went at 83. Just checking the timing. How long have we been doing this for? An hour and 36 minutes. I might, uh, I might have to split this into. I was going to do this in one, but that's might probably not going to happen. Might split it into two after all. Well, there you go, people. Now you have two parts. Ah, oh, Fatty Magoo. A large ass <laughs> in a room with no cover. <laughs> An unstoppable blubbernaut. What shitty design? Well, you could peek. You could duck back into your your room. Yeah, and then he just c come over to you and kick your ass. Well, you took him out pretty quick. Aha! <sighs> Secrets. What does the holy water do? Is it just points? It's just atomic health. Oh. It gives you like 50 health oh, okay. and uh, goes past the maximum. Someone built that because, fire yes. engine into the ground. Because holy, drinking holy water is a good idea. It makes you really holy. <laughs> Fills you with the, the pizzazz of Jesus. Uh, yes, we've got a blue key so we can go in here. I'm going to pay closer attention when you get the keys. Scooting around, picking things up. I kind of like the way the eyeball wiggles. Yeah. Does that kind of explode? And Shoot. there's there's a crashed plane. Oh, is that what it is? And, uh... So was this popular when you released it on the... I mean, did it get... Not really. I mean, you could only run it if you had, like, Gene Nukem 3D with the Atomic Edition. Huh. Which not everyone had. So this was more in the niche of a uh, modder community. I guess. I didn't really, you know, I wasn't really like active in any of those communities. Ah. I just made a thing and put it out. I was like, here's a thing. Oh, you have to, didn't you have to go back through that? Yes, we need to go to, into the, this little shopping area here. Huh. This is what Heathrow Airport's like, I guess. Oh, yeah. That ghost was checking out the rack. Yes. You wanted some ghost porn. <laughs> ghost porn way of the samurai. Ah, <laughs> oh, you can burn down the trees! Yeah, you could do that in Duke 3D as well. Huh. I don't think I've ever actually done that in Duke 3 uh, Buttons. Hey, the four button code. These are great. 
Did anyone ever just act like a dickhead and just put like a wall of fucking buttons? Figure it out, assholes. Well, there was a level in Genie Nukem Video Atomic. Genie Nukem Video Atomic was incidentally really fond of these things. There was a level in Genie Nukem Video Atomic that had like an eight button combo, but you could find the answer in another room somewhere. Yeah. That Ooh. was it. Yeah. Latent memory came back. <laughs> Beep. That opens this thing, whatever the hell this is. The secret shop that all airports have. Yes. For ultra porn and snuff films. I guess it's a. Uh, this is like a little restaurant that I couldn't be asked to put more than the token amount of effort into. <laughs> Fucking things. Ah. There's a button. Yeah, I think it just opens the door. Ah. Because we've got the yellow key now. Hey! <laughs> Fun. <laughs> What's that do? Ow! Um, I finished uh, Shovel Knight. Did you? Yeah. What do you think of that? I thought it was a fucking excellent game. Yeah, I think so too. It was, I, I'm what found a, myself going back through it. What a great debate that was. <laughs> oh, I was like, if you haven't played Shovel Knight, go play Shovel Knight. It's almost like the child of about 12 different popular NES games. Yeah, and it, does, it makes it work though. Mario 3, Mega Man, Ghouls and Ghosts, DuckTales is in there. Yeah, with a little bounce mechanic. Now we're in a crashed plane. Uh. That's a custom texture. Can you tell? <laughs> Look at it. It's marvelous. Didn't even anti alias that one. Now let's blow up these explosives they have in planes. I guess they're fuel tanks or something. <laughs> yeah, the big yellow fuel tanks they keep at the back in coach. The fumes get to the uh, poorer passengers. Oh, gotta put the fuel on there somewhere. Turn them into a form of mutant hill hillbilly. Actually, speaking of which, do you remember Redneck Rampage? I certainly do. I certainly do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is what we needed to do. We need to open the way to the exit. That is that what we've accomplished? Yes. <sighs> I swear this MIDI is just playing the same little tune over and just like da 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 da. No, you can just only because you can only hear certain notes from it. What name do you often use in naming video game characters by Zach R. Tola? Well, I tend to mix it up. Okay. Well, if it's if I can't be asked, I'll just call myself Yards. <laughs> but um, the last Zelda game I played, I called myself Useless. <laughs> Which was the last Zelda game you played? Majora's Mask, of course, oh, when yeah. it came out, the re-release on 3DS. That's actually really good. I'm a bit enjoying that. Well, I got a review of it coming out, so Ooh. let's be quiet. Okay, here's that gag I mentioned. Like, see, it's a metal detector. Yeah. And um, just look at the screen as we as we pass through. Is there a way of getting through the course not? This no. It's a stupid question, Gabriel. And then monsters appear. Yeah, Someone's trying to sneak onto the plane with a gun. Deploy the fucking monsters. It's quite a difficult effect to do because you yeah. couldn't. I, you couldn't. So I couldn't you... change the like. The uh, staticky screen. I had to again make an additional wall that sort of yeah. zoomed upwards too fast to see. So is that what that's doing? Yeah, it's basically closed a door in front of the thing, the door with the this texture in front of it. Huh. That's why you can't break it. It's fascinating all the little shortcuts and things that you have to use to achieve these effects. Like, yeah. it's kind of like when you look at old filmmaking. It's like we did this with mirrors, and it's like, ah, oh. limitations, building Great creativity, and all that. Oh, there's an old Duke poster, Sister Act Three. The, the, these areas are quite wide and empty. Boom. I think oh, I yeah. stopped caring at this point. That's that's fair for an airport at yeah. like a certain hour. Uh, here's the moving walkway that airports have. <laughs> Ooh, oh yeah, I remember I had to put an exit level button in this because for some reason the u the usual thing didn't work. <laughs> Just I don't know. Oh, you gotta hit the. You had to self destruct the airport. Of course. Now we're in the departure lounge, which is the boss level. I've tuned out and just haven't even. I haven't even noticed how we got here from being undead. Like, what's the we're goal? Just, like, we're what's just happening? Been, we're just been traveling through the country. Oh, okay. So the undead. Oh, so we actually crawled out of the ground in our, in our dimension. Yes. Oh, okay. And now okay, I, I didn't click to that. Yeah, of course we're still in our dimension. That's no. where the evil ones were. Okay, Bring so... It on, <laughs> uh, it's a big monster that fires rockets because it's the second act boss from Ginnikum 3D. 
Shoot it. I think it's even got the same like sound effects because at this point I literally couldn't be asked. <laughs> You'll notice I designed the character in such a way that I wouldn't have to do walk animations. Well, now it's it's also scarier. It's got it's just a top half. Grrr. I am a, I am a disco skeleton, a rave skeleton. Look at me rave at you. It's an angry skeleton. And there's an aeroplane. That's real and not a backdrop at all. I am not a backdrop. And the oh, music oh, is he dead? No, no he's the music still going. for this level is uh, "Spirit in the Sky" by Norman Greenbaum, most <laughs> recently made popular by Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Although I'm pretty sense. sure it's a Christian rock song. Listening to the lyrics, um, yeah, but Greenbaum himself was a Jew. Like it, he was, I'm not sure if it was like sort of. See, like, it is about, like, sort of Jesus, but I don't think it's a Christian rock song. Exactly. Sometimes Christian rock can be a good song in its own right. Yeah. And it's not like that got that faintly desperate air that most Christian media has. Jesus is alright with me. Yeah. Die. There we go. <laughs> Killed him. Poof. What was it like, um... Chronicles of Narnia is technically Jesus books. Yeah. It it's not as overt. Right. Um... As the spectral abomination crumbled to dust before him, Chris Quinn felt the incredible force of the evil retreating from behind his eyes. Across the country, a wave of supernatural force dropped zombies where they stood and spirited away the tortured souls of the dead. My throat hurts now. How's it going, Emperor Palpatine? As he felt his soul return gingerly to his body... <laughs> that was a curious adverb choice. Chris heard a fading voice boom at him within his mind. A fading voice that also booms. Okay. Yeah, I noticed that when I was doing my logo. I was like, hmm. What have you achieved, human? It said jeeringly. Christ, no, do a fading voice booming. I want you to try, try an impression of that. Let's, let's... Okay. What have you achieved, human? What? This is Adverb City, it said <laughs> jeeringly. You have driven us from your tiny insignificant nation, but our forces remain stronger than ever throughout the globe. Are you nodding off, great evil? Ah, said Chris to no one in particular. Or the voice that was talking to him. That sounds like a challenge. Nobody in particular, or the evil that's just It around. was probably in his head, because he's insane. <laughs> Chris gazed up at the jumbo jet parked nearby. That he knew how to pilot. The doors hung open <laughs> invitingly. I hear the United States are lovely this time of year, he commented, strapping himself in. Just all of them, you know, the, the vast and different um, you know, time zones and climates of the United States are all exactly lovely in June. Yes, all of them. Especially uh, San Francisco, lovely yeah. in June. San Francisco Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Anchorage, Alaska. Go to San Francisco in August, sight unseen. You all have a great time. The weather will not be awful at all. I love, like... Yeah, flying a jumbo jet that you will never land because there's no human not trained in jumbo jet. Well, I had some plans jet. for the third episode that I never made. All right, well, let's go over. What well, what have we missed out on? Where was where where was Yahtzee Croshaw at age? I'm gonna guess twenty, um, nineteen maybe. Yeah, well, younger than that. Oh, okay. Well, because well, when was, was this in the in the within the Rob Blank? Um, because that's a good way of dating, sort of. I when think I released the first episode after Rob Blank. But, but the second episode I released a while later. Okay. Which might have been after some other things. I can't keep track. So, yes, for the, th for the third <laughs> episode that I never made, my first plan was to have the first level be on the aeroplane, obviously. And you don't know how to land it, so you're just going to jump out. <laughs> and then the next well, you level... Are dead, so. But the next level would have been a level without monsters. Woo! Where you would land in the sea, and the challenge would just be to get through a series of undersea caverns without drowning. Hmm. Oh, okay, so you've had your soul return, you're no longer undead. Yes. That seems like a disadvantage when fighting the hordes. Yeah, well, I guess, you know, they wanted, they didn't want you as part of their horde anymore. Oh, oh we've been, we've been turf, we've been rejected, we've been kicked out of the party. Yes, oh. Nietzsche quote. Oh. Nietzsche. See, that's, <laughs> that's such a cute name. That's, that's not the snappiest phrasing of that. No. He who fight monsters should see to it that in the process it that I've fallen asleep. Yeah. I mean the the In snappy... the process, once you begin said process, ensure that while engaging in this process, one does not should you engage in said process. The snappy version is fight ye not monsters, lest ye become one. 
that's the snappy one. <laughs> Did he was well, I mean I I don't know, I've never really read a lot of Nietzsche. Um Nietzsche. Is it Nietzsche or Nietzsche? Well Or is it one of those like well, considering it's European a pronunciations? Considering it's a English. Germanic name, it would probably be Nietzsche. 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 Neat. Nietzsche. Um Are you saying something about Nietzsche? About Nietarino? Nietarino. About Neat Leading Long Day? <laughs> Niederific. About Niederan and Niederido. <laughs> Niederan and Niederino. You can mate them and... You've forgotten what point you were making now, haven't you? Um, yeah, we got onto Nietzsche Pokemon and that was just entertaining. Yeah, figured you had. <laughs> anyway, um, so, what would be what will be our next game in my odyssey of past works? Oh no, that's right, we were talking about like what the rest of the Age of Evil was going to be. Where, where was the story? You know, well, was... that was kind of all I'd thought it through at that okay. point. Well, how about now? Has, has, has playing through rattled something out of the old noggin? No. Although oh, well. I do remember that the secret level for the third episode would have been uh, Chris Quinn. It would have been called Quinn Kong. That would have been the opposite of Reality Bites, which was the shrunken down... Yes! You would have been a giant Quinn in a city. Kind of like the centipede fight in Majora's Mask. If you say so. you get to become Enormo Link. Oh, yeah. yeah. For, like, one cool little boss section. I don't think you use the mask oh, Until your magic run out, as it yeah. inevitably would. Uh, if you get the magic buff from the fairy and then run well, around. Well, obviously yeah. I hadn't, because I was speeding through the game. Oh, Fuck, I'm not going to find all the hidden fairies in the dungeon. Fuck you, game. <laughs> I got shit to do. Busy man. Time is money. So and the next game in my personal canon, I'm fairly certain, is The Trials of Odysseus Kent. That's an interesting title. Mm. Is it about a guy going on a journey? Sort of. Of the mind? Sort of. It was sort of like my answer to Monkey Island, I think. Oh, alright, so we got a, 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 another point and click. Yes. It's, and this uh, is... It's going to be mainly point and clicks going forward. Okay, and this is after uh, Rob Blank. Yes, this was after Rob Blank, and I'd alienated myself to the entire AGS community by being a twat. And sometime That's awesome. later... I that just... is awesome. So they actually revolted against you being a schlong. Yeah, and sometime later I replayed Monkey Island 2 and thought, oh, now I see how it works, and decided I had to make another adventure game. And that will be our next instalment of like... the Ego Review. Can I find like some sort of conversation? Is there like the, the adventure game forum still... Still keeping an archive of those days? I wouldn't know. I have. I don't really care to look. What happened? Who did you offend? I prefer to live in the present day, Grandad. Piss off the... Yeah, I'm getting there. Piss off the uh, the powers that be, the clique that ran. Anyway, uh, like, uh, why not provide some questions for the Q&A next time as well? Now that we're doing this again. And... Um, Maybe the next video will continue the Ego Review. Maybe it'll be something else. Who knows? Maybe I'll have to record another goddamn thing. Well, Gabriel sort of does it on sufferance these days. So maybe I'll just record something. Um, maybe I'll take over all the recording duties. Just because... Well, just I to enjoy stop the, his whining. I enjoy the Ego Reviews. Like, this is interesting to me. I like seeing the things that you produce and create. And I like seeing the things that, like, you know, young you have produced and created. So I'm looking forward to going through all your old adventure games. How many did you make? Like, how many games have we got in this until we get to, like, uh, Poacher? Let me think. Um, Rob Blank, this, uh, Trials of Odysseus Kent, Five Days of Stranger, uh, 12, 13, Episodes 1, 2, and 3, Adventures in the Galaxy, Fantabulous Wonderment, uh, Seven Days of Skeptic, Trilby's Notes, Six Days of Sacrifice, uh, The Art of Theft, um... We might have a look at Poseidon 12 if we feel like it. And um, I thought we might have a day where we look at some unfinished builds I found on an old hard drive recently. Hey! And um, then it's... I see Crowshaw, the deleted scenes. Then it's Poacher. And maybe then, Consuming Shadow will be out at long last. Dun 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 dun. After all that. After, after all that, yeah. Because that is, that's like 11, oh, I suppose, like taking away the two we've already done. That's like nine games. It's quite a few games, that's yes. That's a fair haul. That's a, that's a fair slog. Yes, I've been at this a while. More games are on the Atari Lynx. More games that were on the 3 do so. so, hope you enjoyed this voyage into action to break up the point and click rubbish, because we'll because be holding our nose. Point and click. It'll, it's uh, point and click as far as the eye can see for a while now. Oh, a vast Australian desert of clicky things and puzzles. Do the puzzles... I mean, well, you know, what, what ones do you think are good out of that hole? None of them. 
Not even the five days of fiddly bot. Well, I don't really like adventure games anymore. <laughs> I fucking hate the genre that I spent literally most of my time on. I mean, so, um, you should stop making professional wrestling games or fighting games. Really, fucking just branch out there. Do something you have you ever tried to design a melee engine? Oh so Lord, it's Jesus, surprisingly no. hard. <laughs> anyway, let's take Mugen. Any final thoughts? Um, after uh, about Age of Evil. Needed more enemy sprites. Are you, are you sad I didn't make a sequel about a shitty Borderlands knockoff and called it Rage of Evil? <laughs> are you, you, a, you can stand through that now. It could be like... Are you sad I didn't make a game about household kitchen pests and called it Age of Weevil? <laughs> Check for Millipedes. Um, are you upset I didn't make a game about loose leaf books and called it Page of Evil? How many more of these have Are you got? Are you sad I didn't make a game about the affection between a man and a woman and call it Age Love Evil? Oh, affection between anything, I suppose. Womp womp. Are you sad I didn't make a game about um, motorbike stunts? And call it. Do you see where I'm going with this? Can you finish this one? Um, Age of... Hmm. What motorcycle stuntman named... Age of, uh, hmm. What would it be, Yahtzee? You should make it about, like. Good night, everybody! See you next time! All. Okay, he who. I'm guessing that was the gaze into the abyss quote that we just sort of blipped through. Yes, I was a pretentious little scrote. <laughs> Welcome once again to the ego review, in which I flutter my old tat around for Gabriel to look at. <laughs> His withered, wilted lettuce leaves. And we see how far I've grown since my teenage years. Gosh, I think remarkably. Gosh, it's already hot in here. Um, okay, so we're doing WASD, or, or is uh, it just, just the D-pad for the, um, the, the arrow keys for the options? Should be WASD once you're in-game. Alright, God, I hope so. And of course, there's no control change options in the options menu in old Duke Nukem 3D, which is what this is a mod of. So, Detail. I don't actually remember... Hi. Yeah. I couldn't place how old I was when I first started working on this, Internet but it, I was working now. on it for quite a long period of time. So much so, I seem to recall that, because um, the point of this uh, exercise was to mod Dune Nukem 3D into a game about um, a snarky British character, and obviously I changed all the voice lines to be me. Um, so yeah, take us, take us through, you know, give us a... A run through. Of, is there a cutscene opening to explain the plot? Are we going, you know, would there be. No, you might as well just start, really. Oh, okay. But, uh, get ready to hear my juvenile voice before I had a decent microphone. <sighs> Massively compressed. Yes, let's not draw it out. You'll want the first episode. There's mm, okay. only two episodes. I never got around to finishing the rest. So, there you go, Internet. Your job now is to make War by Moonlight and cleaning up in the Unreal 4 engine. Please don't. Please. I, I really suck. I can take it. This is not the best background and font. No, I'm finding that. But, I you, take it. but hey, you read it. Fishy here. I can't hear it. Oh, well, there we go. Okay. Good. I'm glad you can't hear it. Cause okay. I, cause Ooh, it's look at that. That's a dead Duke Nukem, I think. No, it's a dead security guard. Oh, okay. It looks like Duke Nukem's pants. So what, how this works is, you are... Um, Let's jump. A Br British guy. Is there open... Your name's Chris Quinn. I'm gonna call him the Mighty Quinn. You've got a gun. E. Yep. And uh, you fight monsters in an. In, oh um, man. And you're in an insane asylum. Because you're just so mad, you guys. Hold it down, dude. Hold oh, it down. Okay. Whoa, you're shit at this. I, fe I have the feeling we're gonna be here a while, I'm listeners. I'm pushing space. Press E. See, because space used to be used. Okay. The line is, something's awfully fishy around here, and for once it's not the casserole. I'm a professional humorist, I'll remind you. Ah, ah, ah. See, when I first started working on this, I recorded a bunch of lines for it. And then when I, um, and then I sort of stopped working for a while and then came back to it. And when I came back to it, I found that my voice was much deeper than <laughs> it had been in the, the original t line takes. That's how young I was when I first started oh, it. Oh, poor Ben, he's dead. Uh, use, use the, uh, chart, actually. Aha. A secret place. So yes, I, I was big into Duke Nukem 3D editing. 
I could probably remember a lot of the keyboard shortcuts if you pressed me for Duke Nukem Build. Yeah, I've got to get my, like, quick old 90s... Alright, that's not shooting. You're missing! Yeah. Oh, hey, you found a shotgun. Ah, I had one bullet. It had thing. one shell left. So, because I want, I did the, um, like, low-effort Duke Nukem mod thing, where I wanted to feel like I'd changed something, so I kind of reduced your starting health. Just for larks. There's, there's, you just got all your health back just then. That's interesting, because I... I would have just thought, okay, there's obviously a switch. I, I thought that was lethal to the touch. Yeah, I was just sort of working within some quite severe limitations to this. I never really put much thought into the design. It was not, what can we do? It was just like, uh, what's the most we can do to differentiate from Duke, okay. I suppose. Boom. So they, these, these zombies are just the pig cop, basically. They're the pig cop, but I lowered their health significantly. And uh, there's... Added uh, my new voice files, which are obviously me again. Clearly, where Slender Man got ripped off from. S slowed down. Hey, everyone knows Slender Man was ripped off from a different thing I made up. <laughs> which one? You know, the um, Chizomythos. Ch Alright. Oh, uh, you know, it's been a long time for me. In Trilby's notes. Oh, give me that. Give me that, though, pistol ammo. I suppose I got 29. That's pretty good. That's a lot of shotgun. Yeah. So that's enough shotgun to get through the business. That's shotgun up the wazoo. Patience. Now, it was a tradition in Duke and, like, huh. s like Oh, okay. <laughs> Art. It that was, is, like, a very sort of 90s character expression there. I was very into drawing characters with trench coats because I used to own one. I guess this is just another case of me putting a character that's basically me <laughs> in a game. <laughs> At least you... Okay, it's E, isn't it? Alright, oh, okay. At least you lived in England, yes. where wearing a trench coat would make sense. Well, I even wore it in the summer months. Yeah, but what's British summer, really? A uh, controlled duck. Okay. British summer can actually be quite warm. At the height of summer, it can be as warm as India. Huh. Okay. I mean, it's not not a patch on Australian summers, of course. Which, of course, I've which I've noticed hasn't doesn't stop certain people wearing leather trench coats. No. even throughout. Oh, okay, there we go. No, that was there was a guy. What's? Oh. And of course, it was a notorious like trick with the dune you can build. You couldn't do sector over sectors because like this is fake 3D. You could, however, add an invisible teleport when you're dropping down a hole. Is that how they did that? Yes. Huh. So when you drop down a hole... You're actually like, getting... Yeah, you're being, if you did a teleporter thing, but you, like, place the teleporter sector effector off the ground, then it wouldn't make the teleport zappy effect. You'd just invisibly drop from one sector to another. You know how they did uh, water and how you could pass underwater? Yeah. Uh, the underwater was actually a completely different room. When you press down while on the water surface, you just it were teleported, teleported into the... to a different room. <laughs> sector over sector, you just couldn't do. Because this isn't 3D, this is just like... Arranging 2D textures in such a way that it looks 3D. That's... I... God, all this time I never knew. Learned if you've so ever played much. Shadow Warrior, which was another yes. 2.5D game, they, it, at first glance, it looks like they managed to do sector over sector, but they just um, had a trick where they'd create the illusion of the sector before you passed into it. So a lot of work went into Ah, huh. that's another redesigned sprite. That's just the, the face hugger thing from Duke 3D, but it looks like a bunch of guts. Damn you, guts. All right, I'm not wasting shotgun on yeah, guts. Yeah, don't waste shotgun on guts. Just, just use your pistol on them. You can take one quote away from this, ladies and gentlemen. Don't waste shock on guts. And there's a limit to how much of the programming I could change. Because I could only change, like, the, the con files, not into, like, the deep source code of the game. And I couldn't find a way to change the colour of the jibs that the um, facehuggers make when they explode. <laughs> the ammo past him. If you can just get past him, you'll have all that lovely ammo. BOOT! Yep, there's boot. And there's a corpse. And I also redid the monsters. But I couldn't be asked to redo many of the monsters, so initially you'll basically only be fighting the zombies. <laughs> hey, shake what, it, baby. What are the names on those charts, by the way? Huh. Hey! I was nothing if not self-referential even back then. Joss Whedon's got nothing on you. 
The Yahtzee verse. Oh wait, he's. I think he's saying something. But it was a kind of stupid line anyway. Was it about like looking at teddy women on the TV? Nah, oh. it, it was just that. That line was just like a plot building line. Oh. He said, uh, "This is officially weirding me out. What are all these grey things?" Plot. Yeah, I mean, uh, can't be a snarky joke every single line. What do you think this is? Buffy the Vampire Slayer? <laughs> look in the mirror, look in the mirror. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking. You look different in that in which, I mean, it was the original Duke Nukem sprite, rather ineptly drawn over. Eee, pulling a face. I also like, drew, like, um, solid black sleeves over, over your arms when you're using certain weapons. Hmm. And previously Duke was, of course, bare-armed. Use your shotgun, you got three shells. Yeah, I thought I might save them for like, you know. Well, he, they, they like, you'd have made a net gain there anyway. Boom! Ooh, scary bloody words. Those bloody words are surprisingly high up on the wall for something being drawn by someone presumably in uh, death throes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, Dwayne, look, just hold me up. Look, shut up. I know, I'm bleeding too, Dwayne, just shut up. Ooh, Dosbox was, uh... Ugh. Dosbox getting a bit flickery there. Oh, dude, it was flickering as... Next time you die, just enter, like, the god mode code and you'll just come spring straight back to life. I happen to know this. <laughs> so I was ne when I was in Duke Nukem like, level modding, I was never content with just making, you know, like a deathmatch level or a one-off level that you had to run through, like, the setup menu. I wanted to make a whole mod and replace stuff in the game and art assets and shit like that. I wanted to do some good honest work. Because I had ambition. That's why I was making adventure games in high school. I was, uh, perhaps, you know, to quote Red Dwarf, a man whose ambition far outstripped his, uh, ability. Ah, uh, you'll show them. You'll show them all. Yes, so we're just, uh, venturing through the mental asylum, trying to find the, the way out. Uh, is that what I'm doing? I guess. They're coming to take me away, ha ha, ha ha, he he, to the funny farm where well, life is beautiful all well, the time. Well, they took you away. They seem to be trying, if anything, they seem to be trying to take you out again. <laughs> oh, Evil! Yes. I wonder what's in there. Yes, in the important electric chair room that uh, every mental asylum must have. Okay. See, if there's a decal on a I door, because I happen to know this because I did do new commit it. Mm -hmm. There's a decal on a door, you know that door's not moving. Oh, okay. Because the decals do not move with the door. Ah. Oh, see, that's, that's, I'm learning things. Um, I'm guessing that's going to kill me if I go in there. Well, there's a key there. Yeah. So I think you do have to go in there. Oh, I know I have to go in there. But the game's just going to flat out take some of your health away, because it's an asshole. Really? Yes. But don't worry, there's lots of health items around. This is design. This is action game design. <laughs> if you go back to that office, not that office, the, yeah, that one, and uh, you pass through that red curtain and follow the small tunnel, you'll find a room with Rorschach from Watchmen nailed to a wall. Because it was a tradition in Junior 3D to add pop culture references and stuff. And these were the pop culture references that appealed to me. <laughs> Um, to my recollection, I mean, I think the first time I saw sort of the kind of pop culture Easter eggs was in Duke 3D. Like, were there games that did that much before Duke, or...? Um, not to the same extent. I mean, in no. Duke 3D, you could, you'd, you could find Indiana Jones, like, yeah. impaled on a wall. You'd find Luke Skywalker hanging from the ceiling. And that was continued, that tradition was continued in a lot of, like, first-person shooters after that. Like, in Blood, where you could actually find a corpse of Duke Nukem. Huh. That's not a real fridge, it's a fake fridge. Why would you tease me like that? Cause... You're so teaseable. Okay, okay. Teleport down! I th yeah, I think the pop music for this level was Disco Inferno, because everything's on fire. Yay! Because so the first episode of Duke 3 only had six levels, because they released the first episode as shareware. Oh, yeah. They like, second and third episodes had like 11 levels each. I think it was like nine normal levels and two secret levels. I played through it again a few years ago and was surprised at how quick it was. When yeah, you say just, quick. Well, just, it, just, it was a short game. Like, 
Do you think? Yeah. Okay. Like, the status were quite short. Okay, wait, wait, I got something for you guys. Yes, yeah. you got a rocket launcher that doesn't look any <laughs> different. Hey! Hey, that was something I added to, like, the programming. Like, every now and again, blowing up of a zombie spawns one of the gut monsters. Ah, clever, a little bit like the, uh, Spanish people from Resident Evil 4. If you, you can't like. shoot their heads off. If you like. Oh no, a, ho a zombie horde. Oh yes, God, I, I wish I could hear this. I replaced some of the lines that he says when he explodes people. I think the last one we just heard was, This is just like Guy Fawkes Night. <laughs> because he's British, you see. Mm. What is Guy Fawkes Night like in the UK? Oh, okay, I'm out of Well, it's basically our Thanksgiving. We, oh. have, we have fireworks under fire. <laughs> we can burn some shit, you know. We have, tradi we have certain traditions with it. I mean, the, the usual tradition was to, like, burn an effigy of Guy Fawkes. Huh, okay. And we'd uh, call that the guy. And we'd eat baked potatoes and bananas in tin foil. And that sort of thing. Bananas See, that's what? actually quite a difficult effect to create, what you can see on that wall. Is the, that a lighting effect? The uh, lightness. Well, the thing is, um, uh, you, uh, a wall uh. can only have one texture. Mm. So what you're seeing there is a very, 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 very narrow additional wall that's been put up in front of the the back wall. <laughs> Probably that is na if you look, take a really close look, you might be able to tell. I'm surprised you figured this out that fast. Oh, I think you shot it twice. Oh, figs. You just want to use the pistol for this. I don't have the pistol. Yes, ammo. you do. Oh, I don't have ammo there. Um, hang on, what's the button? Oh, never mind. I keep... Ooh, there's that fellow again. Yeah, remember him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a fun week on the internet for me. I'm sure it was. But you're supposed to press that switch, by the way. Oh. Well, shoot it if you can't use it. There you go. That Who will do it? something, I'm sure. What the? Oh, okay. Yes, you stood up by surprise. Out of the way, guts. Do you wanna know I'm how, fat fighting. Do you want to know um, how I replace the sound effect of the face hugger? Okay. Ow. Oh, you're dying horribly in fire. Am I able to get out of here? No, there's no escape. You're dead. Okay, that's fantastic. Super duper. Well, I would say into the god mode, but there's no way back up. Oh, Just have to start again. Okay. You may want to, like, point out okay. things like that. Because I just couldn't even, I couldn't even see, like... Yeah. I mean, uh... This game doesn't really have the sterling game design you've come to expect from me. Yeah, just enter God mode. How do I it's do that? It's D-N-K-R-O-Z. I want to die. There. Hmm. Now you're immortal Chris Quinn. Chris Quinn was a character I did some other things with back in the day. Like, I made a, a brief, I briefly made a sprite comic on my website called Chris and Trilby, <laughs> in which Chris from this and Trilby from the Jizomythos were forced to interact, even though they hated each other. <laughs> was, uh, forced to be together. So what, what, what were their adventures like? What happened to Chris? Well, and well, Chris was a sort of wild and crazy irresponsible demon hunter, and Trilby was a refined gentleman thief. Okay, Basically, okay. Chris just sort of latched onto Trilby and wouldn't leave him alone, because he thought it was funny. <laughs> Alright, we're back to the guts. Go away, guts. You can't even hurt me. I am your god! See... I made the, the, uh... The gut monsters. And when I made them, I said it was in reference to the movie Brain Dead. Yeah. Because uh, there's a scene in that film where somebody's guts comes out of their body and strangles someone. Oh, that movie. Peter Jackson's brain dead. That was before he was making nice, friendly Hobbit films. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try that and meet the Feebles. That's another classic. Oh God, yes. Meet the Fe meet. I encourage you to watch Meet the Feebles. Actually, I encourage you to trick a parent of small children into to what let their chi children watch Meet the Feebles. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah, I think this might actually be a jumping puzzle because oh, okay. those are so great. Yeah, especially in like fake 3D. Yeah, you have to be careful to jump 
off from there onto the thing directly above you. Uh, so because you can't do sector on sector, you can, however, make a sprite and flatten it and lay it out like it's a floor. Of course, the graphics makes it flicker like Billio. Okay. So just, oh lordy. I think this, this must have been my tribute to Half Life, and all the jumping on things invents you do in that. What's How that? you doing in there? Uh. Also, you can't hear this because we've got the volume down low, but uh, the MIDI music for each level is like uh, the MIDI for a pop song that whose title is in some way related to what's going on in the level. A theme you'd revisit when you started Zero Punctuation. Yes, initially. I think... Oh, fuck. I'm... God fucking damn it. Well, you picked up... Well, you pressed the switch that does something, I think. Oh, uh, okay. Not that way, because you need a key. I think... Yes, it opened that door. Uh. So now you can get in there. Eat it, you little splotch. You guys can die just because I don't like the look of you. There's a switch. Shoot the switch. This is, uh... Okay, I just broke the glass. Whoops. Oh. That's just reminded me that there's a, there's a secret around here. Hmm. 